What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny's DCEU in review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every movie in the DC Extended Universe. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Hello, Tim. The big dog, Kevin Coelho. Hey, Tim. And of yeah, course, really, the producer. Was, he mimicked me perfectly. Producer slash producer, Nick Scarpino. Finally, I've been saying it for years, Greg Miller. They finally found a vehicle worthy of Sylvester Stallone's acting talent. Let's fucking go, Suicide Squad. What an accomplishment. What an accomplishment. Crushed it. You'll love to see it. And of course, uh, Andy Cortez is still on vacation back home in Texas. Hit in the eye by two snakes, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, actually, now, the Greg, sorry, Suicide quick Squad update. original video began with us drinking in sadness now we're gonna start drinking in happiness all right Yay. everybody recap juice is back perfect Ooh, Wait, I should say, andy gave me a little bit of reek he actually updated me he's actually sleeping on a bed of snakes right now in, oh in wow. wow wow yeah, yeah. That's what he's doing. up in the uh, end wait, th th it's funny you mentioned sylvester stallone because wasn't he uh in in guardians of the galaxy 2 yeah that's mm -hmm. where the love affair must have started right oh it a lot of crossovers Gun, presumably yeah I, I thought he was going to be if there was ever a volume three. I thought they were going to do that with because they had like Michelle Yeoh and, all, and that badass cast of yeah. people on the other ship. So Miley Cyrus. presumably they're all hanging out. She was the head doing some other stuff together. But Sylvester Stallone's one of those guys that just like has been around for so long that like I'm surprised we don't know him. I'm surprised sure. we've never actually hung I out wish, with Sylvester I wish. Stallone because his star has name. faded, but it's starting to come back up now with all of these cool. Watch your mouth, Creed. Creed's amazing. Come back. Come back. I mean, but Creed, Creed was every every bit as much of a Michael B. Jordan vehicle as it was. I mean, it was it was a Michael B. Jordan vehicle for the most part. He's not got the Sylvester heard, Stallone right? in there. What's now? I don't think he's in three, right? We'll have that's to wait and find out. Will yeah. there be an interview? Probably. Can't wait for that. But that's not what we're talking about today. We are talking about the Suicide Squad because this is kind of funny's in review where each and every week we rank and review two different movie franchises. Uh, right now, we're doing DCEU in review. And next week, we're going to be doing a mini series of Don't Breathe in review. We'll be Don't doing breathe. both Don't Breathe 1 and the new Don't, Don't breathe. breathe 2 coming out next week both next week so check that out gonna be a lot of fun uh but you can get the show on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com if you want to get it as a podcast just search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review and we'll be right there for you if you want to get the show ad free and watch live as we record it patreon.com slash kind of funny is where you want to be just like our patreon producer molecule has done thank you so That's very much name. it is it is and because of that uh he will not have to hear the ads for MeUndies, Feyerty, and Upstart that we'll tell you about later. But for now, let's get right into it. The Suicide Squad. With a runtime of 2 hours and 12 minutes. Released on August 5th, 2021 in theaters and on HBO Max. Uh, I was directed and written by James Gunn. Uh, a budget of $185 million box office because it's a new movie. This gets a little bit shaky and obviously is not finalized. But there's some interesting things to talk about in this pandemic world we're in uh the suicide squad is currently at 4.1 million dollars off of the preview night show times that started great. thursday uh which is very good for an r-rated movie okay oh. so, so there's there's that to keep in but mind but isn't it terrible um, from like just a movie uh it's not terrible because it's slightly topped birds of prey which only made four million in the same time before all this uh corona situation at all and Kiss my uh, grits, some... kevin <laughs> he, he nails you with facts Kiss grits, i'm pretty sure that like oh, normal is like 56 million or like not normal but like good before uh, so we're before... So where we're at now is talking about the the pandemic movies that have come out godzilla vs kong was at 6.7 million but the the cheating thing there is that had wednesday and thursday uh being counted it's and uh, was also fucks. not rated r uh quiet place 2 had 4.8 million on its thursday night but it went on to do 47.5 million for the three-day weekend uh the the projections and like kind of goals that suicide squad's trying to hit is 40 million this opening weekend so we'll have to check back next week see exactly uh where it hits but it's looking pretty good because other similar movies currently where they're at fast nine at 594.7 million and black widow at 275.2 million and that kind of paints the picture of two things Things, how important China is and how important uh, theatrical only releases are to the box office number. Because uh, Black Widow, 275.2, not that great uh, for a movie of that caliber. But that doesn't count the Disney Premier Access dollars. 
Uh, some fun facts I want to get into before we get into our thoughts on the movie. A lot of fun cameos in this. Taika Waititi as Ratcatcher 1, a.k.a. Ratcatcher 2's dad. Uh, so good. John Estrander, the creator of the 1980s Suicide Squad team that influenced the film, appears as Dr. Fitzgibbon, while Stephen Blackert has a small role as the pilot Briscoe. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman appears as a party guest. Several yeah. DC Comics villains make appearances at such a... Uh, uh, sorry, make appearances at... Bell Reeve as Bell Reeve inmates, including Sean Gunn as Calendar Man, Natalie Saffron as Kaleidoscope, and Jared Leland as Double Down. Palm Clemente, who's Mantis in the Guardians film and several other MCU films, makes an uncredited cameo as a dancer in a nightclub. Oh, that's right. I was like, I thought she was going to have a bigger role in this because it starts off when they walk into that club and she's like the front person dancing in the group on stage. And I was like, oh, shit, they got her in this. She's going to, maybe she'll be like a contact or something. Never went back to her. Never <laughs> went back to her. Weird. It was just a fun thing for you to look at and go, that's cool. That's, that's cool. cool. That's cool. The Gunniverse. Greg Miller. Hi. You watch this movie. You're the only one that watched it on HBO Max. We all saw it in theaters. So we don't know where you're at with it. Where are you at with the Suicide Squad? What a great movie. What a fun time. Are you kidding me? Come on. It was a good action flick, but it had heart to it. It had a lot of laughs to it. I appreciated that. You know, uh, I think they did a great job of uh, having Bloodsport right. And I think he's so much like Deadshot in terms of like what you'd be looking at in terms of a character out of he's an assassin. Amanda Waller brings him in. He's going to be the leader. He's got a daughter. And I thought they did such a great job of not only bringing him in playing with your expectations of him and then making him such a likable uh protagonist where there were like there were so many times where i was laughing at the little things he did right like when him and john cena are having the kill off as they go through the camp and then cena is like well it, it, people do care what it's dope as fuck and he's like fuck they do like yeah. i like that that little move there was a couple little things where he, he he like did the cool guy thing and then had a moment of like oh god that hurt or whatever that, stuff like that like i liked all that stuff they did to play with him i like that they didn't make him similar to uh dead shot right they didn't make him like an actual trying to be a good father like he just doesn't he's mad at his daughter for stealing a fucking tv watch or whatever like right. there was so much good stuff there and then there was so much character uh around outside of that around those characters really make you like them right like i like the end of like you know uh taito waitiki's in the movie for like all of like what a combined 30 seconds it feels like but like his last little speech talking about rats got me like oh my god like what a fucking poignant yeah. thing right there, there's purpose for all of us if there's a purpose for rats and shit let alone king shark be, shark being cool you know uh i tried to i was gonna put out a tweet about it last night but it's just so cumbersome to get into like Grant Morrison's JLA run back in the day, right, when he actually unified the Justice League as it should be of, you know, the actual stars of the DC universe. That is the comic series that made me, like, think Star – be, like, not scared, like, really scared, but, like, made Starro a scary character, not just a starfish. And so, like, when they announced Starro was in this, when they showed, uh, you know, a little bit of it breaking out, you're like, all right, is this actually going to work? Like, for me, it's, it's crazy that this movie is, what, two hours, 11 minutes – it's obviously enjoyable all the way through, but somehow I think usually when we talk about DC films, even and I'm talking about the DC films we actually like, it usually comes down to ah, but the third act, this, that, or the other, blah, blah, blah. blah. Like, I think the movie gets better when Sorrow gets introduced, when we actually get there, and especially when like Peter Capaldi actually gets in there, where they've been keeping him as this like he's at an arm's length. He, we see him, you know, interact with the new regime at one point, and he's all right, fine there, but then we actually get him to actually go in there and be thinker, to be talking shit. Like, Do you want to? dozen rats crawling up your ass right he's like you'd be surprised you might be surprised by my response answer, or whatever yeah. he says. it was like fuck dude he's great and then when he gets there and gets to be around starro and the the fear in him when starro gets torn uh, let out or whatever and then have star go through and see the starfish I, I had a great time i had a great time with this movie nick scarpino what do you think uh right there with you i mean i think this one was super fun i think this is um james gunn in a nutshell in that i think there was maybe 100 jokes in this and maybe half of them hit and the other ones kind of fell flat but i'm okay with that the ones that hit were great and the other ones just went by you're like let's get the next one um i found myself by the end of it caring about the characters i thought andrew zelba as a lead and the counterpart of uh i forget the young actress's name um i thought they had great chemistry together i thought it was at, at first i'm like oh great they're setting this character up just to be sort of annoying and be made fun of but by the end of it she ended up being the heart of the team which was super cool um and shout out to greg you know the actor's name but polka dot man who i think oh uh, steals yeah, I know, the show i know his name it's david and then i've i've interacted like, with him a few times on twitter he has a last name that hold on i'm looking at that it's like, Russian, right? it's like 
Station like now or something like that. But uh, there's so shoe. many fucking people in this movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, while he's looking for that, I mean, I thought he was his character Off was Malchin. great. Um, I, I yeah, I mean, this movie's just it, it's exactly what it needs to be. It's fun, and it doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's ultra violent, which is great. Yeah. And it has John Cena in tidy whities because he knows he looks good in tidy whities, and that's hilarious. They had so, to amplify him though for the joke, right? That wasn't, that you, wasn't you, when you say Cena. amplify him, do you mean stuff a couple socks down that bad boy? Because yeah, <laughs> looks, yes, it, saw him. That is yeah, exactly what talking him. about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I thought he, I thought everyone had great chemistry. I think it was just perfect casting. I love that they ditched the squad of the the last one just right at the beginning, they just kill everyone off. I'm like, okay, including Pete Davidson who who just was in it for five minutes. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoy this one. I'm looking forward to another one. Um, I, I mean, yeah, it was uh, definitely a lot of fun. Um, the, like, the entire time I was engaged, like, they made an interesting, fun story, Starro. Like, it, Starro's end was really, I thought, really, really cool. Though his last line where he was like, oh, I was enjoying just staring into the stars. I was happy. Um, I was happy. Yeah, I was happy, yeah. More importantly, and this this blows my mind, is that at the end, or like the third act, when Rick Flag dies, I was like, "Fuck, that sucks." I never, never thought I could (laughs) give a fuck about Rick Flag. Rick Flag. (laughs) And then when he gets stabbed in the heart, in the most fucking dramatic, like he's dead. Here's the X-ray version of his heart getting fucking stabbed. Mortal Kombat shit. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I was like, that's a fucking bummer. And they, and, they, uh, and I, and it's funny because, like, I really like John Cena's character. But, like, when he did that, I was like, fuck this guy. And I was like, oh, I guess the show that's going to come is a prequel. Yeah. And then, and then we see Amanda Waller go to, like, turn off the switches and his little light's still on. And it's like, oh, he's still around. You stick around for the post credit scenes and they confirm it. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm utterly blown away by how much. I enjoyed it. How like this is this is what DC needs, and I hope that they do more of this kind of stuff where it's like they get talented people to make good stories with good acting and put it out there for all of us to enjoy. Because they were so like the first five minutes is awesome. Like it's what the the other movie should have been of like, hey, here are all these disposable characters. Oh, they're dead. Oh, characters from the other movie, they're dead too. And it's like, oh, this like. The stakes are all like, you know, like they're real now. Anyways, uh, yeah, they, it was they great. Established early on, right? Anyone can die, literally. Well, yeah, because yeah. they kill off what's his butt, the guy from uh, Gar- no, Boone, Guardians. Man. I thought I was like, oh, oh Michael got- Rooker? Yeah, Michael Rooker in this. So I was like, oh, oh yeah. great. He's going to be a main cast member the entire time. And they did. <laughs> no, with how, right bad, it, with how bad his hair was, I was like, there's no way they're going to keep, like, commit to that look. But it's but it's one of those things where like kudos to them, right? Kudos because you know he called in the favor. He was like he was like Michael, can you come do this like just quick role for him? And he's like sure. But I would expect that because they have that relationship with them from from the two movies that he would want a bigger part. But he's like nah, I'll just come wear a horrible wig and be I'll this funny one. character. Rook, the Rook's not a party for anything. He don't care. He was in that uh, J- the one that was James Gunn's brother, the movie with the Superman Shonda? Brightbound, right? Brightbound. Um, he was in it at the very end for that for that Easter egg, like the J Jonah Jameson. I didn't the- watch that one. It looks scary. You f- um, come on, Nick. It's great. I mean, scary movies are scary movies. But, yeah, I mean, I think also I just want to shout out to, I mean, Carla Quinn, Margot Robbie coming back. Like, yeah. I think they're on a stride now with that character specifically where I think she was weirdly utilized in the in the original Suicide Squad. And in this one, I think they just took that Birds, that Birds of Prey character, yeah. plugged it right into this one. And I was like, this is fun. And every time we go back to her, I was like, I mean, Kevin, you want to talk about anything that happened? <laughs> that the guy turns around and just gets shot in the fucking chest. I was so like, good. I was, I was like, I'm going to get shot she, right now. She just shoots him in the chest. She's just like, I'm looking for red flags. And yeah. killing children, I think, is definitely a red flag. Like so that, good. like, it's these moments that are then carried by great little speeches from characters mm-hmm. that are actually showing growth. And it's yeah. like, all right, is, is murdering people growth? Uh, you know, no, but uh, like the way, reason she did it made sense well in her line of like you're talking about right where she's like i would do the sensible thing and murder them <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I promised it myself if i saw a red flag i would but that's the thing too that's what's so them. hard to make about a movie like this right where you have to have bad people do bad things for the right reasons and sure. i think they ended up striking that balance in this and it was fun and it was playful and it didn't feel like a slog um like the like the david ayer film where you get about halfway through that and you're like i just i'm they're fighting these these faceless creatures 
And in this one, it was just like, I don't care who they're fighting. I just want to see these people, these people interact. I want to see John, John Cena and Idris Elba have a kill off when they go into this town and then get the realization that just killed a bunch of good guys and it have yeah. it not it have it be okay. No, she was I, like, you yeah. killed my entire team. Like, oh. <laughs> We didn't see, or where, where's my team? Why didn't my team tell me you were coming? We, oh, we didn't see, see him. <laughs> we didn't see him. <laughs> I get so excited when like you, you they make that realization of like, oh, like they've killed everyone. Oh, where are I the things? I was like, dude, they like because we see them meet and like have a brief conversation. And it's just like I the payoff was so perfect. Great. How about, yeah, I think how about this movie that? is great uh, in, in the sense of its payoffs and stuff. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is a singular writer director vision. And I feel like sure. movies often work best that way. And those are the types of movies I enjoy most. And especially with that vision is James Gunn. And I think that for a movie that has such low stakes because anyone could die in it, who gives a shit? They gave him stakes because we care about the characters. And he made us care about these Z list characters for uh, so many of them. And I think that that is the strength of James Gunn is finding the heart in anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, good or bad or otherwise i think harley quinn is one of my least favorite parts of this movie and that's a compliment like like these other characters somehow rose above this character that i've loved in a bunch of movies and i love that she's kind of become this thing that we've seen a lot of uh throughout the the various dceu movies and has been a standout in all of them and we last saw her last year in birds of prey right yeah. like like that's cool that we're getting like these dc eu movies like finally started to find their voice in some way and like feel like they're building each other building on each other in a way that uh is more character based than this massive plot that needs to like sure. tie into every single thing it's well, just like okay let's focus on what makes this stuff work and it was that was what was great about it right is that you know harley for the most part is on her own track for this movie before she jumps back into the group right and her track isn't rehashing who she is or what's going on or yada 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 right it is her doing these outlandish weird things being put into this romantic relationship and then that speech at the end is like oh no she still is harley from birds of prey right she still is harley from suicide squad first time around like it is this through line of her character and i think it's the same way when we talk about a lot of people in the mcu or uh, i guess some people in the dceu of like cool like the more I get of her, the more I like her, the more I understand her, right? Where I, I, I loved all her action. I loved her singing the song that would then go on to be her montage. I loved the cartoon stuff as she's blowing dudes away and all this. Like, it was, yeah, you know, overall, like, it was so great having her and having her be a part of that. The whole yeah. javelin thing. I, you know so what I mean? Stupid. I'm just like, what, so what am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> I mean, I, and, and, and to second that, like, though. I think, yeah, yeah the, the spot where she goes ham on everyone and, I, they do such a good job, and I think if I'm not mistaken, they did a, they did some of this in Birds of Prey as well, where you're seeing sort of the reality of what's happening, and then it cuts to her perspective, and there's just flowers popping out of everyone, and like that's kind of how she's seeing this whole thing go down. And I just love that in a movie that just that's totally fine, totally fits in this movie. Why not? More the merrier. Yeah, and what I really love is like them working as a group and like becoming the Suicide Squad, and like even though they're a bunch of shitholes that like don't like each other and whatever, like the fact that we get to the end and their fight against Starro, it's the choreography matches these characters we like. So when they're doing things and whether or not they die, like Pokemon, the Pokemon, Dude, Polka Pokemon. Dot Man dying, it's like it, you're like, oh shit, that. like I didn't want you to die, I and like that's, that's, it was, that's that the, was the thing, right? That yeah, we don't like want Polka Dot Man to die, right? Like it sucks, but it was also like, uh, a, like okay, cool, that's a, a, a cool hero. Way <laughs> Yeah, I'm a totally. superhero, and then, right? <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about, Greg, is like a cool way to go out. It's like it was well choreographed, both from an action set piece way and also just from a writing perspective of like they played us so well that by the end of this movie, the cast that we have left, we're mega endeared by. I'm so happy that we have Ratcatcher 2 still, that we have yeah. uh, Bloodsport still, because like they were they were fun and they were like characters that I ne wouldn't necessarily think I'd like. Like go into this, I knew I was going to be a weasel stand. I didn't expect to be a Sebastian stand. Oh, I didn't mean to Dude. do that. Dude! But that's yeah, what I'm talking about with Sebastian, fucking home. right? You know, and we always about? talk like, about we always talk about you know character de development and growth in these movies, right? And like the fact that like when they're on the plane leaving at the end there, and we look around and Ratcatcher, you know, goes to sleep on King Shark and Harley smiles at Bloodsport, and then like you know, it's it's this like we can feel it ending, and I feel like warm and fuzzy about these characters and then yeah it is this thing of him getting tense and it's sebastian who i've fallen in love with out this throughout this whole fucking movie right and like i was so sad when he was running up sorrow because i was convinced he was gonna die right to have it be that sebastian gets on there does like literally the portillo oh, thing and like the yeah, digging around yeah, and, put, and then like, to see blood sport like reach down and, like yeah calm and it's like holy shit like you know what i mean like you just made blood sport like this character i'm endeared to and but speaking of blood sport he was fucking cool like his his, oh, his use whole of, like thing the weapons coming out and all that shit also like, that, his that helmet awesome. so cool so rad yeah, dope. dope design it it, just like it 
felt like it, it had impact and it like built was building to something and but, uh, him and John Cena is so so damn good together and like shout out to James Gunn just using John Cena to the best of his abilities of just perfect. let's have him be funny let's have him play it straight but everything he's saying is hilarious because that's what John Cena does best and like that was such a letdown from Fast 9 of the, the way that they just made him yeah. just like just mean I'm a, a he, doesn't work. he doesn't it doesn't work, work, work man stuff. we don't want the Marine we don't want no. that we want this fun John well, Cena I'm sorry First off, let's not talk shit about the Marine. <laughs> I'm talking shit about the Marine. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I can't even joke about it. But but, I, but I, I love John Cena in this movie. I think that this is the best he's ever been in a movie, and it, they totally played to its strengths. Um, I don't necessarily love the Peacekeeper being the bad guy, like, twist and stuff, but at the end of the day, that's leading to a series that we're going to get next January. Like, we're not going to need to wait long at all to get this on HBO Max, entirely written by James Gunn. He's directing a couple episodes. Some other people are doing it as well. But, like, that's fucking cool. Yeah, John Cena is, I've said it before, I'll say it again. There's there's a select group of actors in Hollywood, John Cena, John Hams, all the Johns, really, that I think I'm like, you guys are comedic actors. You need to stop trying to mm. do serious shit. You need to stop trying to do action stuff. This, I mean, obviously, he's the action. This is great. His physicality in this, I think, works really a lot better than it did in Fast Nine. For I don't know, I don't know why I haven't quite put my finger on it, but the fight between him and and uh, and uh, Joel Kinnaman at the end, I was like, this is awesome, very well choreographed, and I feel like he has because he's in a superhero outfit, it makes sense that he's throwing people through walls, right? Because this is what this this world has been built and the rules are a little bit more clearly defined in this. But I think between that and all the quips, I think he's found his stride. I think this is the perfect role for John Cena. And I think actually Joel Kinnaman did a good job in this too. I give that guy a lot yes. of shit sometimes, but I think he actually, I think he did a good job. He did, I, dude. Yeah. And if we're giving out shout, shout outs like that, of course, there's people who have improved in the first movie, like and not and improved, I guess, because Viola Davis is awesome and everything she does. But like Suicide Squad, the, but, the Suicide Squad originally sucked. The Suicide Squad, she fucking crushes it as a man. She Waller. plays it so deadpan, and it yeah. works so Terrifying. well for the character. Like until Wait, the moment that she gets, like, she loses it and like yeah. starts like threatening, like Creamy, to, to yeah. blow them all up. It's Oh, it was even really that, good. I, yeah, right. And like, I thought it was so, like, even like when uh, 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 Bloodsport, you know, pulls the, the thing on her, she's like, stand down. She's like, fuck that. It was like, damn, Viola Davis. Like, you know, again, you were, you were, you were Amanda Waller in the first one, as much as I did, don't, do not like that movie anyway. Like, when she's doing the whole dinner where she's sitting around, like, mm -hmm. worst of the worst and eating the steak with a uh, hopper or whatever, who will go on to be in Black Widow. Like, uh, I was like, you're great there, but like, she shines. This. Everyone shines in this movie. I guess that's the biggest thing about mm -hmm. it, which is crazy. Or where it was like, when we were done, Jen's like, who's your favorite? I'm like, I don't know. Sebastian? Yeah. You know what I mean? I can, you, I can go around and name a million different people for why they were awesome in this movie. The, the one thing I want to say is like the 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 one group that didn't shine for me was the the government agent people with her. Like they felt a little felt like like they, like they stepped out of a movie. movie. <laughs> they felt like they stepped out of like community. You're like, this is like a TV it, it show. Like community. And it was like, this but, is well, weird. Now they're going to be on a TV and show. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> but especially starting uh, the movie with that, I was like, oh man, because there's so much great tonal things going on with the beach scene. But every time it was cutting to them, I was like, I needed what that. What they're to doing be. is funny. The betting is funny, but it felt overacted to me in a way that I was like, oh fuck like is this not gonna be as good as i think and thank god we got past it, and it was it was incredible for me I, it was it was the setting it felt like it needed to be it was like this is this it looks like a real world setting like you would see a team like actually like commanding a team in the field and it needed to be a little bit more like bond to villain-esque and then have these characters be a little less accentuated but you think they're all dead now because of, had one of them hit her over the head with a fucking nine iron no because no, no, we thing. saw for, for amanda waller as I know her from, she's, they're all she's killing all those Justice people. League cartoon and in you know comic books and everything else. Like when she got up, like I was expecting the post credit scene to be, yeah, they were all fucking murked. That murked. like you know what I mean of like, cool, you're all dead after this or whatever. Yeah. Well, in in the first one, she murders everyone that's like in that building, right? Right. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that is essentially doing that job. I think that those characters will all be characters in the show, and I think yeah. that like because those are all. Like if you see them, they're all like I've seen them before. They're not they're not like notable actors, but like they're they've been on one other of them shows. James Gunn's girlfriend. They're <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> they're they're they one like? of the only things confirmed about the show is that those the two main characters that we saw in the post credit scene will be in the Peacemaker TV show. 
Dude, yeah. the hardest I laughed though was when I I don't even know the, the actress's name where she just fucking screams at shut the fuck up John or whatever yeah, yeah, I forget right, what she great. said to him but I was like oh my god that was get so get back on Statcom or whatever get the back fuck on it was. Yeah. Statcom John. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes ma'am you screamed I think in the movie theaters <laughs> so Nick funny. screamed that was so over the top or that something like perfect. that it was perfect man she did. you could tell they did three takes on that and James Gunn was like give me something crazy and that was what came out and he was like this doesn't fit totally but it's so fucking funny we're putting into the movie uh andy cortez wrote in his thoughts he says james gunn doesn't miss shout out to disney for firing him and allowing this movie to exist it's funny fun and does enough character building to earn those cool moments and callbacks absolutely absolutely shout out to disney for hiring him back too exactly Uh, yeah wait one one last thing that i thought was really really cool and such a comic book thing is that rat was it rat catcher yeah that that she's rat catcher too like the like couldn't afford like, Ratcatcher one. <laughs> well, yeah, but like it's so cool that we're actually getting like a number two character, you know? Like, sure. like I just like that's how deep we are into the, like these movies or comic books as a thing that like people can be like, all right, fine, she's Ratcatcher's kid, and she calls now herself Ratcatcher too. Will you, Kevin? If all the f- theories had been true, and that Jared Leto was actually Jason Todd, like, come on, you want to talk about getting deep into it? Like, let's yeah, go that there. Yeah, that. Then- um, Still wouldn't saved it. Every once in a while, Greg, I go back and I watch our trailer reaction to Batman v Superman. You should you, you pitching with his this shirt movie off? that did not exist. <laughs> and it's so fucking funny because it's so Could good. Have been bizarre, so, bizarre would have been better than Doomsday. Yeah, much sure. Way, better. way better. <sighs> but hey, still the best that, DCU movie, right? Nick, hit me with the plot song. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> forgot. Plot, Do the Randy plot. Newman one. <laughs> Please tell us the story. Greg, please tell us the story. Wow, I've heard a lot of terrible Randy Newman impressions in my day and age. Not kind of funny, but that <laughs> definitely takes the cake. What's up, everybody? Welcome to James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Uh, we'll begin with the man himself, Johnny Cash, singing Folsom Prison Blue. Prison Blue. Sorry, I've had a beer and a half. Uh, Prison Blues. As we uh, open up on Savant, that's right, Michael Rooker. You know him from Mallrats, his most famous performance of all time, and just that. Uh, he, of course, is in Bell Reef. He's sitting there. He's bouncing a ball around. He's showing how uh, he is like he can target anything. He can move real fast. He's one of those types. You know what I mean? He's one of those kind of people. Uh, kills a bird. Congratulations to that bird. Uh, and then Amanda Waller, or well, actually, you don't know. The door opens up, and he's like, I got 15 more minutes. She's like, no, you don't. You've been pulled. It's time to join the Suicide Squad kind of thing. And so she pulls him out, and they get him in the thing. This is where you were talking about with the first uh, cameo of uh, the guy who, yeah, created the Suicide Squad, putting the, the injection in the back of his brain, calls him something like sweetheart or some kind of, you know, insult like that or whatever. It talks a lot of and, shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. You would too, though, you know, Kevin? No, nah, I don't like it. Because they yeah, always get out eventually, you're one and that's bad who they go away. for. You're one bad day yeah. away from being like one of those people who, yeah, would totally be like the overcompensating asshole prison guard to the metas. Oh, my you God. You definitely no, see no. Kevin, no. Super here's how it goes. I'd get their Week information. One, I'd make my own suit. Shit. You know what I mean? That's it. Learn Kevin's all the shit. That actually is a shit. really Week good one. idea, Kevin. Week two, he starts beating people with batons very no. quickly. Oh, yes. once I got the shit, I'm out. Nick, I'm out. Never seen these people again. Just running around in some sort of... Blue like beetle this. suit, something I don't like, know. Something like this. You want to be the something blue like beetle? That's whose suit you it's got. A right. suit. It's a good suit. You see, you're going to have, have, have to steal from Cobra Kai, baby. That's right. <laughs> Cobra <Kai>. baby. <laughs> I remember, though, Zola. yeah, Hami Rodriguez are right. Or, uh, isn't going to be the same kind of blue beetle where he'd have a suit, he'd have the scarab, but it's a whole different thing. We'll talk about it later. Um, So you're thinking more of Ted Cord, where you'd have his technology court industry. Of course, he gets killed eventually. A big deal in DCU. Uh, or DCU. I digress. Uh, They got Savant now, everybody. So it's time to assemble the rest of the team. They got Captain Boomerang. Uh, They got Javelin. They got TDK. They got Pete. Uh, What's his name? Hines? No, Pete. Pete Williams? Davidson. Pete Davidson. Davidson. Pete Davidson. And also Davidson's Nathan Philly and the CDK is awesome. Pete Hines would be amazing. <laughs> that's, that's Pete Hines. <laughs> Corey, there's a gift for you. Lay them all out. All the different characters. And Pete Hines walking and in, all right? Pete Hines. Just throw uh, they got Weasel. Feet. And then eventually, of course, on the plane, they got Harley, who was taking a shit and had to be late to the thing. So funny. As this is happening, they start. This is what you were talking about earlier, Tim. Uh, Amanda Waller's underlings start running the old Deadpool in the office of who's going to die first. I like this a lot. They're shading money. Waller's like, "What's going on in here?" And she's, they're like, "Nothing, nothing." Blah blah blah. It's your boy. Uh, they're on a plane. They're flying over there. Captain Boomerang. This is Jai Courtney, right? Yes. Yes. Hard time. It's him and Bane. Oof. Can't keep them separate. You know what I mean? You want to talk about two guys that came up at the same time? Can't do I'm it. Hardy. Yeah, that's right. 
Now, Tom Hardy, he's Venom, right? Tom Hardy he, is Venom. He got bigger. He got bigger. Who's the Tom, one in the Leonardo Bear movie? The Leonardo Bear movie. That's the Revenant. That's Tom Hardy. That's Tom Hardy, yeah. I'll tell you what. These guys, yeah. you know what I mean? One of them ever goes down, the other one doubles their acting job. I don't think that to, Kevin's, or, to Kevin's point, he just made Tom Hardy a much bigger celebrity than Jai Courtney, sadly. Sadly. I think sure, but it's it's what I'm always talking world. about. Like as soon as Jeff Keighley drops, Greg Miller is going to be a bigger celebrity, right? Because I'll be able to come in and be like, "What's up, everybody?" Now I host the Game Awards. You know what I mean? That's fair, but I don't know if you were standing next to each other, the it's, two of you. I don't know if anyone would actually uh, confuse either of you for the other person. You know? <laughs> yeah, but acting and being the right <laughs> all host. Right, all right, that's accurate. That's accurate. I'll take I, it. I'll take just it. Just throw that out there. <laughs> Uh, so there. Oh, Rick Flag's there too. They introduced Rick Flag a long time ago. Uh, he was walking. He's gotten a lot bigger, Rick Flagg, right? Very. Very, very great. popular with Gia, by the way. Gia likes Joel Kinnaman a lot. I mean, oh, who yeah. doesn't like Joel Kinnaman? I mean, it's I mean, the only Jesus reason Christ. I watched it was the first season of Altered Carbon because he is exactly. naked for most of it. And, and by God, does he have a cards, beautiful right? body? House he was in House of Cards, yes. Yeah. He was in House of Cards for a hot second. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, also, he was by the, the senator. Way, I know it's blasphemous and crazy, and don't get me wrong, yada, yada, yada. But when he got stabbed in the heart, and granted, it's Suicide Squad. There's, we're about to establish anybody can die, everybody can die. Yet, yet. He got stabbed in the heart, and I was like, are they about to reintroduce Ench- Enchantress? Like, how are they going to bring this guy back from the dead? Yeah, oh, are they going to uh, fuck? You know what I mean? I was like, they, they're crazy enough to do it. Maybe, maybe James Gunn could do it too. Maybe he's going to make Enchantress cool. It's one of those things, again, awesome. we talked about. Like, I was, <laughs> I was, done. she died. I've never spoken very highly of Joel Kinnaman. I, I don't, I've never really liked wow. him in, in a lot Joel, of roles. If you're watching, I'm sorry. Cast. Thanks for being a Patreon producer. But, uh, if they like, this is one of those where I'm like, damn it, I was bummed to see him go. I kind of wanted yeah. to ring him back a little bit. I think he actually did. He's he's starting to come into his own with. What's well, the thing where like in like, I, as much as I don't like Suicide Squad, what year was that? Should I start 2016. Calling, putting, 2016. 2016. As much as I don't like Suicide Squad 2016, I don't blame the actors. No, you know what I mean. Like no, I feel God, like no. they they worked with what they got, and yeah, I don't think Rick totally. Flag was good in that. Like, movie. what are you gonna sit here and be like, oh my God, Will Smith ruins movies? No, he's phenomenal. They had a great Follow cast. The light, for that. They just the didn't light do... will guide you. Oh, I hate that thing. That's still that was that was really like... dumb. That was really dumb. <sighs> So distracting. I, I heard Why he, would let he that came in. He demanded. Anyways, this man. Uh, they're at the drop now. They're in this plane. Uh, they jump out of the plane. They all start doing. It. You're like, oh man, these guys are badasses. They're cool. Weasel jumps okay, in there. Weasel. Weasel can't do. There was also a funny thing with uh, Pete Hines and the, the helicopter thing, where like, he, is that a werewolf? And he started freaking out. Every lot, made fun of him and laughed. <laughs> See, that was one. Of, that was one of the <laughs> jokes really that I was funny. like, I didn't think that one hit. There was a, oh, there was that hit. Like, that hit so third, hard of me. Every third joke for me in a James Gunn movie doesn't hit. And again, I'm okay with that because you just wait five seconds and another one's going to be there. But I, I do think that the one critique I could have of these is like, we could have cut some of the improv out, just a little bit of the improv. Out. It's, okay see, Nick, me. that hit so hard with me. Like I yeah. was laughing hysterical at that point. This movie's made for me and Kevin, Nick. All right. Not you. <laughs> Fair you enough. Want, you want to go watch this. <laughs> like, watch his- is that a type of dog? He's like, you ever seen a dog like that? I don't know. I haven't seen all the dogs. <laughs> that was what is, uh, TDK. He names, uh, uh, God, what does he say? It's like a, he's like, it's a, uh, he, he named some dog that it looked, an it Afghan looks hound like maybe, it, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's funny. I, like I mean, dogs. also just shout out to the setup and then pay off of TDK. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. What's the I name? Didn't, wait, wait, I didn't like, see it just letters. And it yeah. fucking got me. Right, they're letters, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, Harley's into Javelin's accent. Yeah, yeah, there's like this, we were talking about this before we went live. Like this plot is actually very simple, but it's like, there's obviously so many jokes layered in here to double back to as we remember. That's what's his butt from fucking Pitch Perfect 2, right? Yeah, the guy, Ula, he was a YouTuber dude, YouTube, Ula, baby. Yeah. That's awesome. We met him at VidCon. You know I mean? He performed at one of the collective parties. He's just one of those guys where I'm like, He's always just utilized the perfect amount in every movie he's in. Hundred percent, the True. perfect amount. Thank God, because so if he was utilized a little bit more, it'd be no good. Fair he enough. had two lines in this movie, and that was that was the perfect number. He jump, every jumps out, Weasel jumps out and just sinks. <laughs> he freaks out and sinks. Rick Flag's like, did anyone check if the Weasel can swim? And there's like this awkward thing back at Suicide Squad HQ or whatever, where they all look around and like Waller's like clearly looking Let me at tell the John you, character. <laughs> Yeah, and Nick Scarpino kind of played that You ever had one of those moments where we go live and then you start and then you realize someone on our team just did not do their job right? And I'm not sure. I'm not saying anyone in particular. <laughs> I'm just saying someone didn't do their job right. You give us that look like that's the Amanda Waller look that she gave to that one person that was like Don't. you could tell it was the dude's job to check and yep. see if totally Weasel right. could yeah. swim. He's just like fuck. God, it was just like when the intro finishes and Greg's not there. And all of a sudden, it's just 10 seconds of silence, and we're like, oh. 
I, it's funny you bring that up, Kev. <laughs> I, this won't be a long story, I promise. But Please I go for it. It's was, Friday. Was, Have fun was doing some kind of funny branding stuff. And I was looking back at uh, some of our trailer reactions from the old studio and the black widow trailer. There was one time that for whatever reason, I wasn't on the reaction. So it was blessing Nick and Kevin. And this is one of blessings first days at kind of funny ever. And they go, the intro plays and it cuts to them. And it's just all three of you guys. You're just sitting there. And then Nick goes like, Oh wait, wait, who's hosting this? And you guys start having this conversation about who's going to host. And it was just like, oh, okay, Kevin, let's just have Kevin host it. Kevin's like, uh, I didn't know I was doing this. I don't know what to do. And Nick's like, just host it. Just host it. And yeah, Kevin just wanna, goes, I didn't want to host it. <laughs> Kevin just goes, uh, uh, how do we do this? Uh, hey, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't be put in that position. I shouldn't be put in that position. <laughs> Listen, we learned a long time ago that Kevin is a surgical instrument, okay? He has to be used for very specific The purposes. right tools, the right tools. Exactly, got exactly. The tools, we got the talent. Uh, so everyone looks around, yeah. Uh, Rooker doubles back, that's Savant. He swims back over there. He grabs the weasel. He swims back to shore, puts it down. Weasel's dead anyway. He's like, all right, well, this didn't go well. They all start approaching uh, in stealth mode, and then Pete Hines himself jumps back up, and he's like, I'm here. And everybody's like, what are you doing, Pete Hines? Sit back down. Make Bethesda game. And he's like, I'm here. I'm, I'm the guy who called. I'm, I brought everybody the way you wanted to. And they all put it together, obviously, that Rick Flag's like, we've been made. And like, you know, he sold this out, yada, yada, yada. All the lights in the forest come up. Bah, 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 bah. And uh, he, nobody he's, nobody comes to give him the hero's welcome. He's like, aren't you going to be? And poof, they shoot him in the face. Just his face annihilated. Just, just fucking shot Shotgun blast to the face. His face is just gone. Oh, my God. Look like a James watermelon. Gunn, really. And it was it like, exploded. there you were like, oh, this is this movie. This is what mm-hmm. James Gunn's going to do with a rated R DCEU movie. Let's fucking go. And sure as shit, it's a goddamn bloodbath now, right? As everybody from the woods just opens fires. Uh, do whatever. I love it when, you know, uh, he gets his face blown off, falls down. Rick Flag's like, we've been made. Like, you got to get us out of here, Waller. She's like, no, the mission stands. And he goes to argue, and Harley just goes, oh, okay, and stands there with a rocket launcher and shoots it into the fucking crowd of people. And then it's all off to the thing. And so there, there's a rocket launcher. There's an explosion. Rick doesn't know what's happening. Captain Boomerang comes out. He's throwing the boomerangs. He cuts the dude's fucking head in half, and it just like a melon, like in a fucking uh, uh, samurai movie, slides down. Kill and does Bill. That thing and does. Huh? Kill Bill. Yes, exactly. Um, they're all running around. Uh, Mongal runs over. She jumps on the helicopter. Oh, wow. She wrestles it out of the fucking sky, slams it into the ground. It cuts up. Captain Boomerang kills him in front of Harley. Then Mongal comes out on fire. She's dead that way. Uh, the deta- it turns out the, detach- the TDK is the detachable kid. He's like, go for it. And his arms detach and fly in there to start slapping people in the face all awkward. Ridiculous. And stupid. But like, you think, oh my God, he's going to go ham on these people like these arms are going to do something special and yeah. they just sort of fumble around they're like what is what like and they just like bat him away it was fucking so pathetically funny well, when they come back man. to him when they cut back to him and like the, the arms are in the air getting shot and he's just on the ground it's writhing on the ground writhing in pain. In my arms. yeah we're it's pointing so out never funny. never declared dead never declared dead it's fair show. you didn't yeah. see his little light did you see his little light yeah his light no he's critical when they go on the final pass of his uh thing. Go. Come back. so we get more Great. nathan fillion i i I, I love nathan fillion and i'm so I'm, drinking a mr pib <laughs> while he walks into the plane <laughs> i'm just so glad that he's 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 getting a little you know they're putting him in some stuff now which is good because i always thought he should have been a bigger star than he was after firefly Okay, fair enough. Uh, so all this hell is breaking loose. Javelin shot in the chest a bunch of times. Uh, and the one and only Michael Rooker is Michael. like freaks out, just freaks out, which is great again where they're playing with all these things, right? Of like, we don't know him, but we know Michael Rooker is usually just as badass in all these films. And Savant seems like a badass or whatever. And then just sees like literal warfare and like freaks out and runs and starts swimming away. So then back at home base, right? Uh, Amanda Waller screaming. To, they're like, he's defecting. Uh, she's like, you know, turn back, turn back. He doesn't turn back. She blows him. Uh, and that's when his head goes out and it's Warner Brother Presents, right? And then we cut to the other side of the island. where well, team Shout out to the birdie, birdie, too. I love it. This this whole intro piece, I think, is going to go down as one of the most rewatchable uh, superhero little bits of all time because it's just so funny. Great action. And the little birdie thing we saw at the beginning of him killed the bird and then the bird coming to land on him before the thing. Fantastic. Greg Miller from Kind of Funny. Tim, do I fucking miss on plot recaps? No. Why come in here then and act like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing? That doesn't happen here. That's after the introduction of the next team. They end the fucking amazing montage with that. 
I would like you to take off your moron. beanie, look at it, throw it across the room. That's your smell punishment. Smell it first. Smell it first. Tim, that's smell your it a little bit. That's your <laughs> Give it a little bit of a smell. <laughs> Give it a sniff. There, there, it, is. Is. there it is. Throw it look across at it a little bit. Yeah, throw it across the fucking look room. Look how dumb his hair looks. Looks great. His, his hair looks great, first off. His hair looks like a boy, like an entire boy band. In, in one hair. One, it's just like, all the hair of a boy band. made it worse. Hair of the way band. Head. Understandable. Uh, anyways, it's team two over there. It's Bloodsport. It's Ratch- uh, Ratchet. It's <laughs> Ratchet and Clank are there. No, Ratcatcher. Uh, King Shark. Uh, Polka Dot Man. Uh, Peacemaker's over there right now, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it, but not Harley. Uh, and not Rick. Anyways, uh, and so then it begins the montage of people who died. A great fucking song that, of course, is from what, Nick? Oh, I can't remember. What was the song? Don't. People die. People, these people who die, people die. It's the end song from Dawn of the Dead, of course, oh. directed by the Zack Snyder version, uh, but of course, written by James Gunn. So nice. Oh, oh that's that cool. is that's, that's super good cool. Call, Greg. I don't know how much, if any, James Gunn had any input on that, but a great fucking song that I'll always remember. Oh, he always he always chooses the songs. Every but song. what about when he writes the movie and doesn't direct them? He means the oh, for oh Donald gotcha Dead. gotcha no yeah for this movie no no this is all yeah, games. For sure. yeah, yeah, no, you no, could no. tell because every song was like a fucking like every song played was that, of that era it was fun excuse me so they go around there and this is when yeah they're seeing all the different li- red lights light up we see TDK is critical uh, we're panning over all the dead bodies and all the you know Mongal burnt burnt out uh, weasel dead on the beach the money's exchanging hands back at the thing just a fucking amazing montage. And then, of course, Tim ends with the bird that uh, – not the same bird, obviously. A similar bird. I'll say cousin of the first bird uh, coming mm-hmm. back to eat Michael Rooker's uh, blown-up body. Um, however, then we jump back three days earlier, and it's Bloodsport. And that's Idris Elba, if you didn't know. He's Black Superman from the Fast and Furious universe. Did I get that right? Hobbs and Shaw? Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs Hobbs and Shaw. Correct. Mm-hmm. correct. Uh, he's uh, cleaning up the town, as the kids said in Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? But no, he's actually just cleaning up Belle Reve itself. And he's, he's there, and he's pulling Michael Rooker's gross-ass hair out of the drain, uh. and he's scraping up gum, and Pete Hines comes out of the bathroom, and he's got toilet paper stuck to his hand, his foot, and he's like, oh, take this, whatever. And then Amanda Waller and her team walks in, John and then the, the woman, and they're and the John guys are very like, who the fuck is blood this for? I'm like, I'm fucking right here. And she, they do the entire speech as she walks over. Uh, of course, course blood sport you know this train yeah i'm sorry go ahead Tim. just a simple thing that i really appreciated and like james gunn does this a lot is playing with our expectations like editing wise of like how things are going and i expected everyone to die in the beach scene but yeah. i didn't expect to get any more dialogue from them after so i love that they all die in the beginning at least team one dies and then we get this bit where we get a little bit more of pete which i appreciate it because i wanted a little bit more of pete so that worked for I, me a lot. I, again like you know, we we're talking about it. it's is a plot recap not a moment by moment thing but i appreciated when uh they came out because we remember uh you know the original suicide squad and how like dour it was of like them trying to get out of bell reeve and dealing with all the d- different assholes there i appreciated it with them one is this a two second shot or whatever when uh savant joins the team initially walks out there where uh pete hines is sitting there with the security guy and he keeps going eh? oh like he's gonna grab his guns and shoot him and the guy's like don't you do that don't do that <laughs> i don't like that pete hines anyways uh back in this timeline uh and so yeah you know uh bloodsport's like i'm not gonna do it waller but he says it with a cool accent i'm not gonna do it like i already told him i want to join your team or whatever and she's like oh i bet you will though and yada 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 you'll do it because i'm amanda waller she's like by the way you got a visitor and she he goes over there and it's his daughter and yeah it's that you know this is where i was like oh man i feel so much like this is just gonna be the exact same thing we saw with will smith the first time around and it said no it is that she (laughs) stole a watch and she's here and he's like what why did you steal a dumb watch? You know, always have a lookout. She's like, that's what you're going to tell me? You're not mad that I took the watch? You're going to tell me how to steal? You're mad that I got caught? And he's like, yeah, I don't even want to fucking be your dad. I told your mom this. Fuck off. And she's like, you it's fuck so off. Scream, fuck off. The, the, the oh, dialogue God. was so good. Because it was like, what'd you steal? Oh, is is a watch with like, a, you could watch TV on it. And he's like, why do you want that? And then like the argument that they have is just. I don't know. You could do it on so your phone. Fun, it yeah. does other things. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but a perfect like take a step out of the dramatic movie moment and just step into real ass yelling matches that you've had with your family. Oh, yeah. And that's what this felt like. And these, I mean, I don't know if, if uh, the two actors knew each other beforehand, but they, that was another one of those bang on chemistry moments. I'm sure. like, this feels like an estranged father and his daughter. 
Uh, so anyways, though, he eventually gets pulled back to Waller and he's like, whatever. Like, I don't care. She stole a fucking TV watch, put her in jail. I don't give a shit. And he, or in juvie. And she's like, well, actually, you know, she can be tried as an adult here. And she just might end up here at Bell Reeve and totally fucking ruin her whole life and everything would be terrible. And so he grabs that pen and he like puts his door through. He's like, you fucking don't threaten my daughter. And she's like, stay down, stay the fuck down. And she's like, you know, lays out the thing. You do this and it'll be fine. She doesn't have to go here and it doesn't have to happen and everything will be just a okay. Yeah, Nick. I just once, Greg, I'd like you to put this amount of energy into getting me to do something. Just once. No, you, know you what wouldn't. I mean? In the moment, you would not take it well. You know how I've escalated things in the past and how you did not take them. Remember when I was you like, we want to buy you a car, but first I'm going to throw a cinder block through your yeah, old windshield? Yeah. You were like, that won't go over well. That was, like mostly, because, that was mostly because I knew I was going to have to be the person to file the insurance claim and buy the car. Like You assholes yeah. wouldn't be like, yeah. I'll go to the dealership for you. But it, it was just going to be more work car, for me. But it would be a new car that you don't have to pay for. But the you know? joke would be that the real joke would be on the fact that it would take me six months to get the fucking insurance money back. <laughs> I'd be car- Waller either be carless or I'd have a fucking funny. hole in my window. <laughs> this is where we assemble the team. Amanda Waller walks them all through uh, Bell Reeve. Uh, first stop is Peacemaker, who comes out, and it's awesome. This is one of my favorite jokes again from the fucking thing, where she's like, you know, everybody's been uniquely suited uh, suited for this task, and is you know, it, uh, uh, exclusive asset or whatever. And she introduces Peacemaker, and, and he and he uh, Idris Elba's with me like, stop. Are you fucking serious? That's my story. Yeah. <laughs> and she, so he's good. like, no, I, I do it better. I shoot better. I shoot, I shoot with your smaller holes. bullets. Yeah, yeah. smaller bullets. Yeah, that'll come back, everybody. Wink. Yeah. Remember, wink. Uh, from there, it's the introduction of King Shark, right? There he is, Sylvester Stallone, right there. Uh, you know, of course, we all know him from Superboy, the post-death and return of Superman storyline. He was a big threat to Superboy. He moved to Hawaii. He was, you know, dating Knockout. Well, he, didn't, he wasn't even dating Knockout at first. It was a very big thing. Uh, she turned out to be a bad guy. Spoilers. Um, King Shark's yeah, here, know, though, and he's stupid. We all know him from the Harley Quinn show, a show that everyone should watch Dude, on HBO Max right. right now. Ron Funches. Ron Funches. Ron Funches. Yeah. Ron Funches. Funches. Ron Funches. That yeah, that's an amazing one. That's an amazing one. Good call, Kevin, actually. Good call. Um... So he's there and he's stupid. He's reading a book upside down because he can't read, but he's trying to blend in, which I appreciate. I've been there. Don't worry. It's okay. It's me every time I go to the airport. Yeah, exactly. You always have these weird magazines and plastic bags, like Ziplocs. And you, you don't read I'm them. Like, you know, I'm like, like Tim, have you read this? Tim, have you read this magazine, QG? And you're like, Nick, it's up. It's GQ. You got to turn it, turn it upside down. Dude, I was at a Barnes down. and Nobles yesterday. And I went to the magazine section, which used to be the most exciting moment right, of my I life. Yeah. And I'm walking fun. around. I'm like, yo, things are sad. I know it's us that killed it, Greg. No, <laughs> but like didn't. there was one video game magazine, one out of probably a thousand different magazines that they had there. And yeah. it was Retro Gamer, which was like somehow insult to injury where it's like it's not even like a new like it's just looking back at old stuff like wow and then i look over and there's literally just immense interest and it's just all penthouse and i'm like this is a barnes and noble things have changed they They sell smut in barnes Barnes and noble now i was i was very 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 surprised if you go to the Um, one in marin you can actually get a hand job too in the bathroom jesus christ (laughs) jesus christ nick I tweeted the other day about, you know, Jen had some Edge magazine sent here because Jet's on the cover. It's one of her games. And uh, I was I took a photo of it. I tweeted out. I I miss the age of video game magazines, which to me was super poignant and like nostalgic. And like I put it up and so many people were like, oh, me too. I had this. I'd go to the Barnes and Noble. I'd get this. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then it stayed up long enough that the UK people woke up and they were super offended. I had people that I don't know, but are blue verified check marks that write for UK magazines. And like, what the fuck are you talking about? Magazines are great now. Yada, yada. And there was people in there being like, he's from America. He's from America. It's not like that. Oh, and, the, and the guy's like, really? I had no idea. I was like, fuck it. Pump the brakes, everybody. Jesus. You know? <laughs> yeah, but we are killing you and we will not yeah, stop. Welcome to the yeah, we'll get over to the other side. Don't no worry. TikTok will come for us one day, but we got you. Shot radio in the back of the head. We're coming for you next. Yeah. Uh, Man, then so they go meet back. Ratcatcher 2, they make the joke about we couldn't afford Ratcatcher 1. It was her dad. He, he's gone. We also meet Sebastian the Rat. That is adorable and amazing. Oh, you can, control rats. You can get him in Fortnite. You can't get him in Fortnite. Yeah, if you buy the Bloodsport, he's part of the like backpack. He's on there. The I know. Yeah, you need to be more Fortnite, bro. Step into the fucking point. Damn it. Oh, I got four days to Superman, according to Kevin. I'm all set. I didn't know that's happened over there. Oh, shit, fuck me. Uh, and then we go pick up Polka Dot Man, who's got a dampener collar on. They take that collar off. They take the collar off, and that's when uh, Sean Dunn call- Sean Gunn calls him a pussy, and t- it is Calendar Man, which is fucking dope. I never thought I would see a live-action Calendar Man in the DCEU, but there it is. Will it ever turn into a real movie? Of course not, but 
I liked seeing it, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, then we go into the debrief. Uh, this is the one you've seen in the trailers, right? Uh, except now we actually understand what's going on a bit more. Amanda Waller lays it out. Uh, there is Corto Maltese uh, over there. They have uh, they've been they've had like a dictator family forever. Uh, it's in South America. Uh, that family, however, has been overthrown. Uh, now it's this new guy, and uh, Suarez is the general. I forget what the handsome guy that Harley Quinn falls in love with's name is, but it doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, they are over there. And Amanda Waller's like, basically, I listen, uh, you know, they are super anti-America. America didn't really appreciate what the other people were doing, but they were cool. So it wasn't like we're going to fuck with them. These guys are super anti-American. And yeah, Kevin. Silvio Luna. Luna. Thank you. I was trying to remember. Like that. the moon. Uh, Luna. Yeah. Uh, these people are super anti-American and they've got one weapon to rule them all. It's over in Jotunheim, right? And Jotunheim, the weapon is extraterrestrial in nature. And so guess what, everybody? Well, we got to get over there and we got to stop it. And to stop it, you're going to have to infiltrate. Then you're going to have to find the thinker who goes to this titty bar or just a bar, but it's kind of a titty bar too. You're going to have to go there. Maybe it was a titty bar. You're going to go, Nick, was it a titty bar or was it just a regular bar? I think it was a strip club. I think it was supposed to be a strip club. Okay, I, cool. I think I, I maybe it was a burlesque that. show place. What's well, throwing it, like, me off is you bust in the back eventually and you see some titties. So I'm yeah, like, wait, was yeah, it yeah, yeah. It's got something to do with that. The it's name something. was the gentle kitten in Spanish. I think it's a cat Kevin reference. Kevin midway through giggled and he and I was like, what, what are you laughing at? And he goes, the name is the gentle kitten in Spanish. He said I, I thought you liked that. I thought you liked that. I loved it. I fucking loved it. It was great. Um, so from there, we got the briefing, we get the King Shark hand, we get the oh, it's operate. There's something over there, Operation Starfish. Uh, to which you know, John Cena's like, Starfish is a butthole, and he has to do the butthole. And they're like, so no. funny, yeah, very funny. Right? I, I really love the one thing they had it ruined hand. in the trailer was the, the rat catcher thing of like, what's that? She's like, that's an overhead projector. <laughs> do you ever uh, use it? Not anymore. And then not why anymore. Still here, <laughs> fucking so funny. Uh, that was good. That was that, good. That Again, almost, this is, I think, a little bit what you're talking about, Nick, right? Where it's like, I loved that joke. The hand, the hand would have been funny probably if I hadn't seen the trailer or whatever, right? But like, whatever. I, I think know. I think that's it's, it's perfect, right? It's the other joke that unfortunately they spoiled in the trailer was Polka Dot Man's like delivery, where he's mm. like, well, "We're all gonna die," and he just leaves. I hope like, so. I hope so. <laughs> so good, yeah, but it didn't hit because you see it. I knew it was yeah, coming. Exactly. It's spoiled, so right? fucking funny. Anyways, um, from there, we're back to the present. And, yeah, we're back to the present, and this is where we get the Harley Javelin scene. Javelin's been shot. He's dying. He gives her the Javelin, but does the whole, <gasps> she's like, what? You, you're going to give it? What am I supposed to do with it? Like, there was something I was supposed to do with it. What? And then while that happens, uh, they come over. They capture her, the army dudes. Meanwhile, Flag had been running away. He gets captured as well. We don't know, but he gets captured by the gorillas, by gorillas not the band. Yeah. Not the animated band that people love quite a bit. Guerrillas. Likes this I'm feeling sad. I got the sunshine in a bag. Mm -hmm. I'm useless. But not for long. My future is coming on. Is coming on. Finally, someone let me oh, out of my it. cage. <laughs> I knew Come it. On. I like, knew that's, it was coming. Down that's the a jam right there. Right there. Let's go. Let's go. I know you hate it, but that's a great jam. Uh, so from there, we go to the other side of the island, right? Where now everybody's sleeping around the campfire. Uh, Bloodsport wakes up. He sees Suicide... Or no, Suicide Squad, man. Uh, the little rat. Polka Dot Man. Is, is, oh, okay. You're right, you're right. Polka Dot right. Man. Kevin, do I fucking miss? Yeah, you miss all Kevin, the time. take off I Tim's beanie. Yeah, 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 hey, you know what I mean? Keep me honest. Kevin, I'll That's why you need the recap you. juice. You need the recap Kevin, juice. Kevin, cheers to Kevin, everybody. I'll accept the, the notes from him, but not Hatless Tim, this motherfucker. You know Jesus what I mean? Christ. Hatless Tim It's so Tim. floofy. Look at his hair. Yeah. So anyway, he sees Polka Dot Man all tumored up and with the polka dots under his skin. Then he goes into the bushes and vomits. And they're like, what is going on? They're like, It's all colorful and shit. Like, nothing, and nothing is fun. I, so good. I, the effect of the like blisters, the colorful yeah, polka dot blisters on his skin was so well done. I'm like, that is so fucking gross and creepy looking, but it's yeah. like, all, but it, it's, it, it's a perfect analogy for this movie where it's like, that should not work. It should creep me out, but it's fucking hilarious and disgusting at the same time. Greg, uh, yeah. I am not too familiar with these type of DC characters. Is polka dot man. Is that a, in the comics? Does he also have, like his face and shit gets polka dots. It's one of those where I'll be honest with you. I, polka, I mean, the reason this works so well is so many of these are D list B listers or whatever. Like, I don't remember that ever being an origin story for polka dot man, but I'm not confident to tell you it never has been. Got it. Uh, oh, but it works really guys, well. Yeah. Here's another, here's a follow up question for you. Cause it just took me 20 minutes to remember this. Did you know that polka has an L in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, Weird don't Al forget, Nick, that. I've used it a lot because I played Polka Dot Man in the one and only Lego DC Super Villains, right? That was one of my mm-hmm. roles. That's why me and David are connected on Twitter. That's I was why like, I why is this guy not here? I kept saying, I kept searching P O K A and it just didn't come up. Polka. Strike polka. polka. Mm-hmm. Like the music. I'm a Vulgie Polka. Polka, Polka, Polka. The Pennsylvania it's Polka. Home Alone. That's that. Oh, I was making a Groundhog's Day reference because. Oh, yours was better than mine, but mine was better. When are we doing Groundhog Day in review? We can do Happy Death Day in there as well. What just if we did Groundhog Day in review? We just did it over and over and over again every day for like Fuck six months. God, would that be great? That'd be amazing. Nick, that's I, a great idea. That's no, really it's not. Good. No, Thank we have, that's we have a four really weeks bad to idea. We're doing Groundhog Day in review. We every do four time. episodes of the same thing. <laughs> I recap it a little bit differently every time. Oh, yes, my we wear Lord. the same thing. Every, everything's the same. Yeah. I love it. I love it a lot. Um, anyway, sorry. After the polka dot man uh, thing, this is where Sebastian freaks out, and uh, 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 Adrian Elba is like, "What's going on?" And he looks over, and King Shark's about Shing, <laughs> King Shark King Shark is about to eat Rat Catcher too. Uh, he drops her. Uh, oh, he drops her after he gets shot uh, by Bloodsport. Then he comes after him. Bloodsport's doing the whole thing with this crazy gun, making it cooler and keeps so shooting, cool. keeps shooting him. So it cool. just keep so much of it like keeps growing and adding and they keep that going the whole movie. Also the mechanic of him like reaching for things on his bodies to attach to yeah. the gun. It's it's such a cool mechanic that like I was like, what's gonna happen when he runs out? I wonder like is he smart enough to not reach for stuff? And then we get the moment at the end where he's reaching for stuff and he's like, None of it's there. None of it's there. Yeah. And it's like, ah. Really good. Really well good. done. Uh King Shark goes down next to a tree. Ratcatcher wakes up. They're like, he was trying to eat. She's like, no, he wouldn't. He would never do that. We're friends or whatever. And then Sebastian like tells her, no, no, that was really happening. And that's when she's pissed. That's when she breaks out her rat, rat catcher tool, brings all the rats in the forest over here. This is when Bloodsport freaks out. And everybody's like, wait, you're afraid of rats? And he's like, yeah, I'm afraid of rats. And then uh, John Cena's there, and he's just in his tidy whities And there was another I joke that I laughed at. Everybody. Why are you in your tidy whities Well, that's racist. <laughs> like, well, no, it's not. Like, but they go back and forth, and eventually, you know, uh, cooler heads prevail. She calls off the rats, and they have that moment with King Shark where she's like, uh, you know, you want to eat your friends, right? And he's like, no. And she's like, well, can we be friends? Yeah, or whatever. Um, from there, uh, that's settled, and now it's about reuniting with Flag. And Before uh, we, we eat- reunite with Flag, let me tell you about our sponsors. Let's reunite with our sponsors. You know what I'm talking about? This show is brought to you by MeUndies. You know how when you're in a nerve-wracking situation and people say, imagine everyone in their underwear to make yourself feel comfortable. As if imagining a room full of strangers down to their skivvies is what makes us feel comfy. MeUndies believes comfort does not start with imagining, but instead it starts with actual comfort. MeUndies designs limited edition prints all the time so you can express yourself every single day. Building your undie collection and picking out which lucky pair gets to meet your butt for the day has never been so fun. Choose prints with corgis, chicken nuggets, your zodiac sign, goofy puns, and more. MeUndies also releases collabs with some pretty big names like the Rolling Stones and Space Jam, A New Legacy, but you have to grab them fast because once they're gone, they're gone for good. Kinda Funny loves MeUndies. You've heard the boys talk about them for years. They're comfort with good designs that make your friends jealous. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com dot com slash morning that's me dot com slash morning we're also brought to you by Faraday brand can it be it's finally summer and we're actually gonna have a real summer this year so naturally we started thinking about looking good after a year and some change because we're going places this summer is what kind of funny is calling hot boy summer you saw the jean jacket you see the haircut we're doing it big this summer and that's where Faraday comes in they make the perfect clothes for the summer tim gettys is the most stylish person i know and he even loves Faraday brand clothing and they're so confident in the quality of their stuff they have a lifetime guarantee of quality they'll replace or fix your clothes forever no matter what and to top it all off Faraday is giving our listeners 20% off that's right 20% off so stock up on all of your clothes for summer now head to faradaybrand.com and use code morning at checkout to snack 20% off all your summer gear that's code morning at Faraday that is f-a-h-e-r-t-y brand.com for 20% off off. Last but not least, we're brought to you by Upstart. If you're carrying a credit balance month after month, it can feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt. Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your credit card debt with a personal loan all online. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score and is expanding access to affordable credit. 
Upstart considers your income and current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash KFMB. That is upstart.com slash KFMB. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash KFMB. So anyways, then there's John back at HQ who's like, I'm so good at my job. And he's like, I found Rick Flagg. He's been captured by these bad guys. And so then it's a radio down to the team. Is like, all right, cool. You have a new objective. Uh, you have to go pick up Rick Flagg. Bloodsport reveals that there's a connection between them. She's like, yeah, he's the one who recommended you for this job. You guys have worked together before. And so this is where, you know, he's in this camp, leave no survivors kind of thing. And this is where we get, uh, you know, King Shark walks in. There. <laughs> I like King Shark's kind of doing like the little he like sneaks, tippy toe yeah. walk. And then he grabs that guy and eats that guy. Uh, this, and then, yeah, John uh, Peacemaker comes in, right? And he blows some dudes away. But for me, it's the hatchet one he does where he kills a bunch of people with the hatchet. And then he walks up on the dude sleeping. He just goes, cha, 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 and leaves it. And then he starts getting the gun. And this is where the shoot out, whatever you want to call it, you know, so tip much for fun. tat. How I can like we that. Cool, kill people? There's, there's one part in it where everyone's trying to be super quiet and it cuts to like John Cena and he's like burning a guy alive with a flamethrower. Yeah. Like, he's, oh, burning two people. Really he's burning yeah. two people. He's burning two people. And there's so many fun creative deaths in here. It kind of reminds me of like Punisher the video game where like at one point they shoot the fan to fall into the tub to electrocute the dude. That one dude comes out cock and balls hanging out, just gets blown away. Oh <laughs> just God, there to say it. hello to the one woman's like doing laundry or some shit. She's a murderer or whatever. There's all, this is also the line of a uh, shit. Uh, before the they dope. go into this thing, right? Where it's like, uh, dope as fuck. No, no, well, that, yeah, we already did that one, but I was thinking before they even go in, there's the line of something like, Peacemaker, I thought you loved peace. He's like, I love peace so much. I'm willing to kill every man, woman, and child for it. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I, I thought you were the crazy one. He's like, I am the crazy one. Like, God, the crazy like, one. what a great team. The delivery uh, but they go every the time we switched, like we turned to Polka Dot Man for a line like that, he just nails, because that's uh, what the Rat Catcher 2 says that yeah. to Polka Dot Man. Like, I thought you were the crazy one. And he's like, I am. And it just, he's so spot on. I hope we see him in a lot more stuff. I know that he's got now his placement in the MCU, and I hope that he's utilized. Well, he for sure better come back in Ant-Man 3, right? For he's sure. coming back. Good. He's Yeah. And the Dark Knight, never forget. Who isn't coming back, though? Somebody's coming, not coming back for yeah, that. Basically, is, uh, Wig is not coming yeah, back for that. Yeah, yeah. They decided to burn that thing. Um, yeah, there was then the line you were talking about, the exploding bullets uh, is dope as fuck. Like, I, fuck, that's true. <laughs> like, such a great line for a yeah, for like, fuck, You're right, that is cool. Um, oh, and this is um, Polka Dot Man kills a bunch of people, and this is like the first introduction of his. I thought they were, I, pr I pretended they were my mom. And you, I thought it, for that first reference, oh, this is some throwaway joke we'll never get right. back to or whatever. Uh, instead, though, they go in there and they find uh, Rick Flag. Right, and he's he's just chilling. They're like, you having tea? And he's like, yeah, I'm having tea with the rebellion leader here, whatever her name is. And uh, she's like, yeah, where are my people? <laughs> How do none of my people alert me you were here? And like, I didn't see any people. We didn't see anybody. Yeah, right? They're like, oh. <laughs> and then Sebastian runs up with the 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 guy's finger or whatever that King Shark had eaten or whatever. And they're like, guys. And then it's a cutaway. Oh, um, Harley now? We, no, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. Shh. We cut away to Corto Maltis, where uh, Thinker meets the new regime that's invaded uh, Jotunheim and killed all the other scientists. And Thinker comes in and gives him basically the presentation on Starro, right? And shows the backstory of, like, they found him in space and they've got all this footage of him in space or whatever. And then, like, you know, oh, cool, like, we can weaponize this army of things. He's, like, not kind of well there's like a central being he's not they're not independent organisms there he spits out the little oh yeah that's it yeah he made babies or whatever the guy says in a bit more clever way and he's like no 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 he actually made like things that control you they go on and then they're part of the central being and it's all one thing over there or whatever freaky. Uh, i love it super freaky i love oh it dude like star like this thing is like sorrow obviously is such a goofy looking fucking villain or whatever but terrifying. i love the idea of him and it's like so great of like you know, obviously, clearly, you know, coming off of Invincible in review, if you watched Amazon, such an inspiration, obviously, for those creatures that we run into on Mars. No spoilers whatsoever. If you haven't seen it yet, it doesn't matter. But, uh, you know, Sorrow's cool and he's terrifying in that idea. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. This is great is, one in Justice did, League, right? Where it, sorry. No, I was just going to ask. One you, 
which is a great one in Justice League, where like they all have it on their uh, face and they're all watching, and one of them goes, "Even Superman's sweating." And then it goes, "Superman sweating," and it's this big. They all figure out that fucking Superman doesn't have his powers. It's fucking great. Would you have to I like the one that you tweeted Thanks out where it looked like Starro was banging like uh, yeah, the South Pole. Yeah, yeah, I'm it's sure you like would wrapped like that, around. You fuck. Well, I was just like a freaky ass image. Like, is he get? Does he get that big? He could just be half of the planet. It's cool. I could. I mean, he could be. Look how big he is. I almost want him to bring him back. Like, maybe one of those little tiny Starros like survives and Starro too. Starro. Uh, so, anyways, now we go to Harley from there because uh, they set it up like, oh, I guess Thinker, Thinker, you still have a job. He's like, thanks, man. Um, now we go back to Harley to which she's in a, just a hole, tied up in a hole, and they just toss a red dress down there and like, hey, put this on. And she's like, all right. And then the next cut is her in like the limousine. Everybody's like primping and taking care of her. She gets out. It's like kind of like a Disney movie or like not a Disney movie, but like a fucked up Disney movie. You know what I mean? Where there's like all the servants there and like, hello, welcome. No dancing candelabra though. Uh, she goes in there and she meets, what's his name again, <laughs> Kevin? Perfect. Let me look Luna. 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 Luna's there. He comes out of the fucking thing and you want to talk about another guy. who's You know, actually, I'm sorry. I'll hit my own song since Andy's not here. Were they born? Born in labs. Now it's time to rank those abs. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Rank Those Abs, a podcast and a podcast here for the DCEU in review. Greg, where do we want to put President Luna's unbelievable body? On He's this just got list? a great body. You know what I mean? Where do Holy I want to shit. put it? All over me. That's what I'm saying. Nick. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. It's going to go to the much coveted Smother Greg spot. Uh, <laughs> Smother Greg. Uh, with where does Frederick Cavill fall on this list? <laughs> Uh, very it, high up as well. The body is he PC power or is he just hanging out? You know what I'm saying? Ah, oh, jeez, I don't know, man. I would like for on, on this podcast for us to have an honorable mention for one, uh, Mr. Flag. Um, oh, wait, shit. he never got shirtless though. Why didn't that work? He Hold did on, it. where's this? And he should have. He didn't get shirtless. Yeah, that's unbelievable. His body and altered carbon. Mm-hmm. Is oh, wow. like scary. It's scary. There it is. It's disgusting. It's almost like it's that's what it's I insulting. To me, I'm insulted by how good. Yeah, how, yeah, how no, you should feel insulted. Sharp his He's also are. like eight feet sharp. tall. I hate so anyways, so, anyways, uh, Harley and Luna meet and they have a whirlwind date where they see his birds and they eat a turkey leg and they have a great time. And eventually, it ends with them on the couch where he kind of lays it all out, right? When he's like, Listen, uh, you know, we love you. Or, and he's like, the people of my town are old fashioned. I've taken over, and so I need to not be a bachelor anymore. And they love you because you're this what is the symbol of uh, anti Americanism, anti Americanism, right? And she's like, Oh, it's just that. And he's like, Well, no, it, it was just that, but I've fallen in love with you. And like, I think you're amazing. She's like, You're so freaking hot. And they make out, they fuck, they get it on, knock over yeah. stuff. It's amazing. And so then they have sex and they lay there for a second. And then it's kind of like, This is cool. And he's like, Yeah, let me tell you my master plan. And so he stands up. He's like, that's Jotunheim. There's a fucking thing in there. I'm going to use it to fucking kill everybody who ever wants. Uh, men, women, and children, I don't give a shit. They're going to die if they stay in my way. And he turns around and she shoots him in the chest. And this is back to what we're talking about being right of like, listen, I made a promise to myself after I got out of my last relationship that didn't go well that I would be on the lookout for red flags. And killing red flags is a, is a, a, or killing children is a red flag to me. So I had to do the only sensible thing and kill you and murder you. And then she's like, you know, and I know what you're going to say. Why not just leave? And then you'd yell at me. Or she, she yells at me like, why are you yelling at me? And it's like another great moment of like, Harley lost in her own head and her own thing, which sounds a lot like me, but we won't get into it. Um, he dies, though, and bleeds out. And she's like, you look better this way anyway. And then uh, the people come in. They apprehend her. She couldn't believe there was, you know, bullets in the gun, actually, which is pretty great. Um, now, I don't I don't know if it's he, the other guy burns the birds. We'll talk yeah, about it. He burn burns the birds. the birds. I forget if that's here. And this that's is also when they're like, what do you want to do about Harley? And he's like we're going to torture her. There's she, they wanted to send her alone. There's other Americans on this Island. Be on the lookout for other Americans. Right. Um, this is where we jump to Milton. I feel like. Yeah. Probably. I think this is where we first meet Milton. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many times where I was like, why is Milton still around? Yeah. I know. Why is Great Milton way, in this fucking building with Love them it. right now? fucking funny and so uh hold on no this isn't we're almost there we got a scene here this is where polka dot man lays it all out we he's all bubbly again mm-hmm. they call it out 
He's like, oh, you know, my mom it was a scientist at Star Labs. Shout out to Star Labs. Very fucking cool. Mm-hmm. And she was obsessed with making superheroes. So she experimented on me and my brother. I have an interdimensional virus that if I don't, you know, expel these every two hours, they'll consume me and kill me or whatever. And they're like, what happened to your, your brothers and sisters or whatever? And he's like, some of them live. Some of them died. And where's your mother? She's everywhere. And we get to look through his eyes of everyone as his mom. So it's fucking so, so good. Fucking it's fight. so good. And this is the thing where they have to go meet Milton. They were on their way to meet Milton. Milton drives in a van and they stop him. And you're kind of confused for a second of what's happening. It turns out he's like trying to get to the checkpoint to meet up with the suicide squad. And then they kill everybody else around him. And Milton's car is there and he's got a bunch of disguises in him. So these people can look like normal people and not uh, superheroes, supervillains that have landed on the island. And King Shark wants to come along on their mission into Corto Madero. Uh, but they're like, no, like, you'll never do it. He's like, I can put on a fake mustache. And then he walks up. And like, that's the worst face and mustache I've ever seen in my life or whatever. So and they mean. break his heart. They're real yeah. mean to him, right? Like, yeah. yeah like, yeah. Well, they're bad guys. wrong. Like, come on. They're bad guys. Uh, Peacemaker has a mission to do. Like, he's going to do everything he can for his mission. You know? I appreciate that's, that. He's a Kevin. Yeah. Um, so now Milton drives him into town. This is where we get the backstory of uh, Ratcatcher and a little bit of Bloodsport, right? Where she's like, why are you so afraid of rats? He's like, why are you the rat catcher or whatever? And then we get the flashback with take that what tiki of him being the original rat catcher and having the tech and he made the tech and showed it to him but he, he was also addicted to drugs and so like you know he died and she took over the mantle and this that and the other um and then he so why are you afraid of rats and he's like well you know my dad trained me to be this fucking badass and when i was a bad kid he put me in at one point in a box for 24 hours with a bunch of starving rats and so like i'm just not chill with rats anymore and like that makes a lot of sense why you wouldn't be put chill with rats yeah. anymore yeah, yeah, that'll so, ruin rats yeah. for you that checks out that does yeah that would ruin them. Mm-hmm. uh the the van bus rolls up to the titty bar slash regular bar we were talking about. Uh, they go in there. That's where we see the trauma guy. That's where we see uh, Mantis dancing. And that's where we get some Fernet, the drink of San Francisco, everybody. Mm-hmm. And they pour big old drinks of Fernet. Well, I'll tell you, as somebody who drank a disgusting. lot of Fernet in my life, no fucking way. I would have been like Cerveza. <laughs> Can we get a beer? Jesus fucking Let me get Christ. A Let's you want to drink in. goddamn? Oh, God. No, thank you. Wait, what, why'd you mention Mantis? She's the dancer. In the She's bar. one of the dancers in the bar. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, that was the thing. They're early. There's no thinker yet. So what are they going to do? They're going to drink. They're going to hang out. We get some buddy-buddy time. They're slapping each other on the back. They're having a good thing. Uh, again, Polk Dot Man's out there dancing, and all the people are his mom on the dance floor. You know, you feel bad for this poor guy. Oh, okay. Really, right? Okay. Um, excuse me. Recap, she was fighting back. Um, eventually, again, the army's on the <laughs> – fighting them – uh, it rolls up and starts questioning people outside. Milton tries to get in, but they won't let him go in. Uh, Thinker shows up. He comes inside. Everybody sees him because he's got a bunch of weird vials on his head. And they're like, all right, cool. Uh, Bloodsport walks over. and He's like, this is a gun. Come with me. We're old friends. As they start to leave, Army comes in. I want to show everybody, you know, show me your papers, everybody papers, please. Uh, you know, s- sensing no real way out. They need to just do something. Uh, it's like, all right, cool. Rat catcher, polka dot man. You take Thinker, you go out the back, you get in the car with Milton and King Shark, and then come to my coordinates. Uh, then Rick Flag, uh, John Cena, and uh, Bloodsport, they're like, I'm here. This is who you're looking for. We're the Americans. They get apprehended. They go out with them. Uh, the people I just talked about go out the back. This is where we see the breasts in the back making me think it's a titty bar. Then it's also where we get out there and get that thing where they're like to think or she or you know, Chloe's like to think her. Like, if you even try to fuck around, fuck around with me, you want to know what it's like to have a dozen <laughs> angry rats crawl up your ass? And he's like, my answer might surprise you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so fucking funny. They get him out there, and then, yeah, then we're into the van, right? Uh, yeah, they're cool. there, and they're all oh, there. So and Idris almost starts talking about the dim mock. Or he's yeah, like, yeah. So did you know this? They teach you this? We call it the death touch. I know the death touch, yeah. Tim, come here. Tim, I'm going to need take you to land your back, take your shoe off. I'm going to death touch your foot. <laughs> And so, Ew. Oh, wow. damn, he got right in there. I like it. Blue eyes. Uh, yeah. So they're like, oh yeah, it's a you know a myth. He's like, that's it's what amateurs yeah. say. And they poof, they all fight, they all do it at once and knock the guys out. And that's they, cool. They that's shoot, shoot a shotgun hole through the thing. Fucking crash the car. But they all walk out in this like badass moment with the thing fi- behind them. Oh, I, I missed it. Uh, in this car, they reveal that Harley's alive. Rick Flag's like, she's alive. Uh, and so they walk out of the car and he's like, there's one thing we need to do before we go to Jotunheim and it's go get Harley. So now. Uh, is, we do we get Harley. a do we get a splash where it says like Mission Jotunheim and then it changes to Harley? Yeah, I like all of the splashes. I think they're fun 
and uh, like the way they're often incorporated with like the blood, or yeah. I think it was one of them was just like plants or something. I, yeah, I think it's really really when fun. you were going down to Harley and stuff. That was super yeah. cool. This one was the smoke one where the smoke blew out or the fire blew out and the smoke turned into Harley. While we're here, my favorite cool. one was uh, coming up when they're in Jotunheim and they get in the elevator and like it's the, like the last light and it's like dirty little secrets and it lights up. I like that one. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so now we got to Harley who's being interrogated by the, the, the bad guys over there, Suarez, and they're electrocuting her. And then, like, how many other people came? She's like, 69. He's like, how could it be 69? And then he's like, oh, <laughs> the then guy he's explains like, it. Me. Who you got me, Harley, right? Um, and then while that's happening, uh, our Suicide Squad arrives and they start taking up positions around uh, to infiltrate the palace or whatever the area she's being held in. Uh, of course, they leave Harley alone, though, and uh, she's behind the guy singing her song still. And she gets up there and like puts him in like the Undertaker's weird submission move, the Triangle of Death or whatever he called it. I forget. And chokes that guy out, kills him, breaks his neck. And then she does a little tiptoe on him to get to the keys, to bring the keys up to unlock it or whatever. Yeah, Kevin. I think this movie did like an exceptional job showing like how much of a badass she is. Cause I feel like in, in past things we, we got a little bit of that vibe in bird of play, uh, bird of prey, but it was less hand to hand combat when she's going through the police station Sure, where it felt it was like, it was more fun gunplay, but here she's beating the shit out of people like no problem. And it's like, Dude. it's so go ahead. I was saying it's so cool that they can elevate her like fighting premise. What I love about it, right, is that, like, the whole thing of her choking him out of the legs obviously is, like, a super heroic thing that a normal person couldn't do. But I appreciate that, like, again, in the universe of the DCEU, you know, you go to Suicide Squad with her doing the scarf dances up in the cage. Like, I buy it. I buy that, like, she's been trained in some way, to, shape, or form to do this. And then, yeah, when she gets down and gets out and they do the montage to I Ain't Got Nobody and she's fucking – slamming that dude's head over and over again into the thing she gets she's doing that one like almost gun gun fu, gun fu thing right where she's like spinning and the dress is unfurling around her and she's like doing this very choreographed like move around and she goes around and kill people i was like this is fucking awesome and i'm not the oh, action yeah. guy at all see i i liked it i i think the scene in the prison from bird of prize i think it just works for me better because it was just more completely outlandish and i think if i'm not mistaken that one ended with her beating the shit out of everyone with a baseball bat in the, in the warehouse she was right? all coked up right yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, was it her baseball bat i can't remember i just remember that scene being like that was yeah, the standout cool. scene for that, that movie was cool. i was like wow this is what this character should be doing and i, I think they got close to it in this but not quite i feel like with this scene what happened at the end with uh her like going out and seeing uh like her group and interrupting and being like oh what are you, what are you guys doing like i think that was comedically oh, like worked so well that it like made the, that that sequence even better. Like it had this really like it was a great sequence that didn't need payoff at the end, and then it had payoff at the end that I thought was like this is great. See, I'll agree with you to a point though. I feel like that was another one of those spots where they could have they trimmed it a little bit. She has a great moment where it's like it, you're seeing blood sports start to scale the building, and Rick Flag is like there, and he's like, all right, gonna kill the one person in the office, and like on the count of three or like three. To, and then the camera pans over. She's like, what are you guys doing? And he's like, well, what? And it should have, in my opinion, should have cut right there. They didn't need him. Oh, coming no, out. Are you I kidding? Love the, I love her getting choked up. Yeah, like, that was you so good. Me? I'm, and then the, the, the total kid thing. I can go back in. You can, and he's like, no, yeah, that's patronizing as he comes back down the wall. Yeah. I remember co- seeing that in trailers. And like, oh, that's patronizing kind of part of it. I was like, oh, I don't know. And it, like, but in this movie, by the time we got there, I loved it so much. Of like this team bond, the, the bond she has with Rick already from the previous adventures, uh, blood sports so far in this movie being dope as shit. Like I, I really loved it. Yeah, I'm I, with I, Nick I, on that. I think that could have been, that should have been cut sooner. And like, there's another moment later in the movie that when we get to, I'll bring up that had a, oh, I have a similar feeling about. Geez. It's funny. Cause we, we disagree on both those moments. Cause like, I, I thought that was a very poignant Harley moment of like, She's constantly getting left behind, at least in comics and cartoons, by the Joker. And, like, to have some a team that's going after her to save her and to, for her to feel it and us to be with her to, like, have those emotions, I thought that was really fun. Uh, from there, we then get this scene of them interrogating, or not even interrogating, threatening Tinker. Uh, think, God, I want to say Tinker so bad. I'm sorry, Kevin. I just, per, your performance it's was okay. so great in Lego, Thank in you. Lego Marvel. 
um uh thinker uh on the roof right and this is another one we've seen obviously you have, like you do this you're dead you do this you're dead and she's like uh, if you have personalized license plate you're dead and like no that's not true and, like, you, you cough without covering your mouth he's like that's not true but i'm walking coughing. back and forth not an invitation yeah he's <laughs> walking back and forth, yeah. i'm walking back and forth i was like all right god damn also it. i have nothing really to point out or say about it but i really find this to be this scene and the 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 layout of it to be very reminiscent of the rock steady suicide squad trailer oh where yeah Superman it looks just up. like it yeah that's true I, I don't yeah, know how that happened, and I don't know who's winking at who when they did that. You know, I'm going to say they copied James Gunn. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you, yeah. I, oh, I don't know who it, saw it. What first? I think. Sorry. That's it. That's all I got. I, I was just going to say I think that like that um, the Suicide Squad video game trailer kind of but like didn't ruin the ending of this movie for me, but it, like I wish this movie the ending was a little bit different. We'll get to it when we get there. Oh, interesting. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they lay it all out what the plan is. The plan starts unfolding in real time, right? Of like, uh, Thinker's going to drive in the car. They'll be in the back of the car, yada, yada, yada. Uh, when that catches up to real time, it's pouring rain. They get out. And she's like, I love it. It's like angels or God splooging on you. And that was one for me. I was like, that's a flat joke. But, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, but then, yeah, it's also this weird, like, blinding white light. You're like, what's going on? It's like, oh, to look cool. Okay. And then it's also then used as a plot point so that they can come up and just fucking eviscerate this army they come up on or the whatever battalion they come up on right and king shark rips the dude in half or whatever and like they're shooting Did, people in blow. didn't love this i i felt like there's there was this was an opportunity for them to gel as a team for the first time and like like you know give us the promise of what we were gonna see raiding the the hq and it's just kind of like an overdone after effects like like brightness filter that they put on this i was like i don't think i don't know i, I wanted this to be a little more creative when they, they stormed the castle but <sighs> okay uh, but they do it and it happens and that's great and then they get inside and this is where it's like all right we got two different teams one team is up here going to set a bunch of c4 and we'll blow this up king shark and peacemaker have a funny thing where he tries to be endearing like i made you he's like that looks nothing like, like me it's like very nice though put it on the wall <laughs> exactly exactly yeah, yeah. uh and then yeah downstairs this is uh rick flag and rat catcher uh and thinker uh being walked into project uh starfish right and starro and actually finally getting to see it and all these people who are caged up with star on their face you brought us new people i've been here for 30 years he's you know duh. and like i forget what she says but she's basically like uh experimented on me or abused me or whatever and then they like panned it figured he's like hmm. uh and, 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 Is star and a woman i mean the person who said it at the time was Oh, I'm confused Star, if you're, Star you're a starfish. Did I gender right there? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, that's what I thought you the did. Star I thought like because you know is like you you know confused. more about Starro. I don't know Starro male Starro. Great question, Kevin. female I Starro. Mean, are starfish do starfish? I thought they were because like, it does. The character at the time said it, which I, initially I was like, wait, is that a cognizant thought? And I was like, oh no, it's Starro no. being like yeah. I've been yeah. abused by this person yeah. through all Red of thirst. <laughs> It was Fred Durster. Like he just, he's the chocolate starfish. All right, that's, that's a different perfect, thing. Tim. Got it. Um. So yeah, you know, and then there's a great scene of like uh, Thinker walking over to the jo- the big portal. They're like, I'm sorry, these two people are here to kill you. Nothing I can do about it. And Star is obviously, you know, this humongous thing. And then we get, you know, it's this then the big reveal. And for me personally, this is where the movie sings. Like I, if I, I am so happy with everything that follows this part and like what this scene is. And again, of like it can be so exposition can be so ham-fisted i feel like and i just love peter capaldi's uh uh, uh, uh he's performance here as he runs through and it's just like ah oh, come on and you know what i mean like we serve the same boss flag and it's like they're chewing the scenery but i'm having a great yeah. time especially as you see all the you know fucking horrible things of like the star on the dude who's like cut in half the star that's been removed and the face is all fucked up and removed too and, he, and like these are dissidents and journalists and anybody who got in the way of the regime and it turns out of course that yes this is partially an american operation that is the americans who found star found starro in space right they brought him back down here we caged him and then you can't do that on american soil so they brought him here to this island nobody or this uh you know, uh, city nobody cares about, and so we've been running these tests for thirty years, and then a run of a mil- a run of the mill military coup means that I fucking might lose all my research or whatever on it. And so, you know, flag freaks out, of course, of just like this is not what I signed up for. I'm here to protect my country. Like, you know, I'm gonna. He's like, I'm gonna g- take this drive, and I'm gonna show it to the press. To which I was like. Here we go. This movie's going to end with somebody putting it into an envelope and addressing it to Lois Lane or Clark Kent. Uh, we're, and he's like, I'm going to show this to the thing and I'm going to do the whole thing or whatever, right? 
And this is when Peacemaker comes down. And he's like, told you this guy was bad news or whatever. I told you. And he's like, why are you here? You're supposed to be upstairs doing the uh, uh, explosives. And so then it is like, okay, cool. There's this drive. Give me the drive. What are you talking about? And this is where we get the Peacemaker uh, flag standoff, right? Of like, wait a second. This ain't cool. Like, we're about to go to war or whatever this. But that's interrupted by an explosion upstairs. Uh, and then the crumbling stuff around them. And they're like, oh, this idiot's blew it early. Uh it, you think we jump time here, but we don't. Instead, we come back and it's Ratcatcher waking up, being disoriented, and then uh, Thinker waking up and being disoriented. And he looks and sees that the walls, the the portal's been smashed, like it's open to Starro's cage. Portal. He's like, "Ah, oh, no!" And he goes to run, and Starro's tendrils come in, get him, rip him out. He's like, "Ah!" And he screams and does like the fingernail shit on the the way down, just oh. fucking dope as hell, right? Brutal. Just dope as hell. Um, then something happens here. It's probably just a cutback. Maybe it's to show that they're still alive. But we come right back to uh, Thinker being up in front of Starro's eye and being pulled apart by the tendrils. Kind and he's like, reason with him. Yeah, exactly. Instead, uh, his arm and leg gets ripped off. And then he throws uh, Thinker against the glass. He just turns to mush and is gone. And then we go through the glass to find uh, Peacemaker and Rick Flag there. And this is where they have their... Uh, brutal fight standoff whatever you want to call it uh, we get the first part of the fight through Peacemaker's chrome helmet which I thought was a cool effect again it, it reminded cool. me a lot of and, you know you're watching this movie and we I, I think I feel like we all know James Gunn so well from Guardians and Guardians 2 let alone anything you would have seen from him before but especially those movies the superhero thing and I'm like as this is happening I'm like oh this is a very cool way cool fight in the way that like guardians 2's opening of us following groot rather than following the action of the fight right i thought it was a cool way of showing that uh eventually we get out of that though and we are up uh in their domes as they fight not no, no joke no pun intended uh this is where you know they're brawling back and forth and eventually uh you know uh, uh peacemaker stabs uh, uses the whatever it is to stab a uh, rick flag in the heart and we get yeah the mortal Kombat x-ray to go in and be like no no he's really stabbed in the heart people we have really killed rick flag and he's like peacemaker what a joke or what a, what a lie or whatever the fuck he says. And then he rolls off to the side. And Peacemaker's like, ah, I did it. And then he rolls over and Ratcatcher's on the other side and she picks up the hard drive. Because she ran from Starro. I left that out, but she ran from Starro. Uh, that's what I, that clip was. Uh, she grabs the hard drive. He's like, give me that back, Chloe. And she takes off running and he takes off running and he catches her and like she's on the ground and he's like, I got to do this and something else about freedom or some other shit, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then boom, now we go back in time. Uh, minutes ago. Oh, he's, I'm thorough, minutes. right? That was the one where he was like, I'm yeah, thorough. she's like, why? If you have the hard drive, why do you have to kill me? He's like, I'm thorough. Great call, Kev. Uh, now we get it from the other side, right? The army shows up early. Uh, th then they're like, army's here. We got to run and do our thing. So they all run off to do their things. This is when King Shark goes into the, an aquarium section to a really cool music and finds all these weird looking gumdrop people. What do you got, Kev? No, don't worry. I, like, Kev is doing this. I'm assuming you're like, why Why would they be there? I would assume Jotunheim has a couple other extraterrestrial things they found throughout the years. That would be their kind of thing. It would be cool to see more of them, right? Um, however, they're in there. Uh, they have a bunch of the bombs they still need to set. Uh, so they King Shark's down there. P this is when Peacemaker broke away. This is now we join Harley, Polka Dot Man, and Milton, and Bloodsport uh, up there as they go on their next part. Uh, as they're walking, we get a fiddle sticks from Polka Dot Man whose bag breaks. He goes down to get it. Milton gets blown away. Uh, they kill the guy who, the army people who sh it's shot Milton. Milton. <laughs> yeah. And then we have this amazing scene of Polka Dot Man mourning Milton and, and Harley being like, who's Milton? I've never who's heard of Milton. Milton. <laughs> like, it, he's that's literally been with us the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so good. Know, Just so good. And so that all happens there and then more army people come up and this is when Polka Dot Man throws out his Polka Dot set turn them to just ash right but some of his polka dots hit the bombs that were there that sets off the big explosion which then rocks the building the building starts falling down uh then the water breaks for king shark he comes down the he s comes up in the water everybody's in the water he comes up in the water the alien creatures are there they turn over they're no longer cute they have big teeth they jump on him just brutally just brutally oh. ripped off in the water fills with blood i'm like is this how they're gonna kill a king shark Holy Damn. shit Right? Yeah, James Gunn killed that with that because it was like we all loved King Shark. We're like, he's just mm -hmm. too nice. Everyone's so mean to him. We don't want to see him die. And when yeah. that was happening, he was like, those motherfuckers. And I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Yeah. So now the building tips on its side and starts falling over, and the water pours out, and King Shark pours out, and he falls down to the ground. And Bloodsport's hanging there, and Harley helps him back in the building. And Polka Dot Man's up there, and then King Shark's on the ground, but he didn't die. And he gets up and he starts eating people down there. And then, uh, 
the bombs already went off, right? Uh, for some reason, you know, maybe it just happens because of weight. Uh, blood sport starts falling through the floors, and he's doing this really comedic, like floor by floor fall before finally, boom, landing, and he finally stops and looks up. And there's Peacemaker with the gun to a rat catcher. And he puts it together real quick what's happening. So he draws his gun. Peacemaker moves his gun. They both shoot at the same time. Uh, of course, uh, Bloodsport fires a very small bullet. It's a Peacemaker's normal size bullet that goes through, obliterates uh, Peacemaker's bullet, and hits John Cena in the neck. He collapses. Um, you this know, was Peacemaker- the scene I was talking about that, uh, that I didn't like and I wish that they cut here because they explained the joke. Or they explained the callback afterwards. Like I like yeah. the bullet thing, referencing what they did earlier. But then they're like, I forget what they say. But it's like they don't play it off as like over the top, sarcastic enough for it to be like funny. And it just kind of comes across as like, yeah, we know we watched the movie. It's I don't interesting remember the third it. reference. They just they were he explained what happened with the bullets. He says smaller bullets, Not sm- smaller bullets, or as whatever. he walks oh, away, he oh, goes smaller right. bullets. I, I actually like. Um, I, I'm fine with the way they cut this. I thought it was it's fun because it gave you more time with the, the characters, but I think it would have been a better sequence overall if they just intercut these two things happening. Because I don't, I, it's it's weird that they're like, let's go back and show you what what happened. That's the explosion. Yeah, I would have preferred them to be like, let's show the like, like do the two. Time. Well, I'll do the two planes of action right. There's a fight happening downstairs, and then we're popping up, and she's like, who's Milton? And then it goes back downstairs, and they're fighting. You know, like I, I understand probably for pacing or for just wanting to stay with Flag. While he dies, like they didn't want to cut that scene up at all. But I thought it would have been better if they, because I was just like, oh, that's weird. Everything exploded. And then they go back and show it. And you're like, okay. Well, there was that moment of confusion that didn't need to be there if they had just cut the scene mm. together like normal. I personally liked it. And on my second viewing, uh, it's fun to be there with Peacemaker on the gun on Ratcatcher 2 and just hear the boom, 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 boom. You're like, oh, that's going to fucking be him in a yeah, second. Right. Yeah, I, um, Good I enjoyed that whole sequence, including the the bigger to small bullet thing. Because uh, just it, they, like it's John Cena's character of asking how, John Cena! Be, you know, because like he it just it makes so much sense that he's like, it's impossible. Like, how do you do that? And then uh, Bloodsport being quippy and douchey about it and being like, oh, it was the thing you said earlier. I, I thought that was very much in their characters. Um. And so yeah, that all happens, and then it's a big old rumble, and it's Starro bursting out, brother. Starro pops out, and he's fucking humongous. Every all, all of our Suicide Squad members who are alive run out of the building, and they run to the army that's like totally like, what the fuck's going on? They're not even fighting them. And Starro's there, and then it's got such an awesome fucking gross design of he screams through like the fucking gills and his oh, his star limbs. I'm like, oh Jesus, disgusting, right? And so everybody's watching this happen, and then of course he opens up his side pocket, and all his little minions come out. Yeah, Nick, when he walks, do you get a little Stay Puft Marshmallow vibe? Of course, yeah. yeah How can you great. not? You know what it's I mean? Great, amazing. Um, so he fly, all the minions fly out of him, all disgusting like, and this is when it's just like you're fucked or whatever, right? And so Rat Catcher's down on one knee, all the armies up. And she sees them start grabbing onto the army's face and dropping them like face huggers. And she puts together and she puts on her mask and one hits and then flops down to the ground. And she's like, cover your faces, which personally, I love this. I love everything. This is kind of such a weird cop out. It's a cop out. But I do appreciate, I do appreciate how fucking lame they look after they don't attach to a face because when they're hitting the face it's like oh fuck and then when it is like they hit her mask and it's like oh it just falls to the ground and just lays there and dies and then like you know polka dot man's or yeah polka dot man slapping out of the air but uh blood sports shooting him and harley just knocks one off her arm once they were onto the ground i was like oh what an interesting interpretation because mm-hmm. my interpretation had always been that Base these crawlers. things are coming at you like slither yeah. almost right like they are not going to stop you can knock them to the ground but i like the idea That's that like, they get one shot they got enough energy to come <laughs> yeah. down and land on your face. And if not, they are harmless on the ground. I was like, yeah, that was kind of okay. nice. You expect it to be an alien's face hugger moment where they're just fucking relentlessly coming yeah. at you and strangling you. If your if your mouth's closed so they can get but, inside. Totally. You, but, it was kind of the idea, but the idea of like everyone literally just being able to do this yeah. and like being fine, like they can't get you now. If only we all knew just they got to cover. tendrils though. Look, put the tendrils in your eyeballs. I, I thought that I thought do. A, this is a little another moment that I wish they maybe I think from here on out, I wish they had a little bit more budget and put a little bit more time into the movie because I felt like it never felt like the the crowd of people that were controlled by Starro were a huge threat to the Suicide Squad. There's a moment where they get kind of mobbed, but I was assuming they'd have to hole up in a fucking like hotel someplace and have them be surrounded like they're a zombie mob. Greg Miller from Kind of Funny. I with you, but I think I'm I'm with you, but I think it played. We go back to expectations. 
where, I, again, my expectation of a Starro minion, right, it would have been relentless. It's going to get you, yada, yada, yada. But that also leads really quickly to, then this thing's going to take over the world in two seconds, right? Mm-hmm. I like this idea and this limitation that if they don't hit you, they fall to the ground. In the same way that, you know, coming to the end that we already talked about, right, like, is Starro really a bad dude? Like, all he keeps saying is, this city is mine. Like, this city is mine, and I've been in here for 30 fucking years. And yeah. I was happy being out in space. Like, I didn't ask for this life kind of thing. And yeah. so, like, I think it is that thing of, like, when they do take over the army around the Suicide Squad, and they all look at him, like, here we go. A bunch of people are going to die. And instead, they just moan or whatever. And he's like, the city is mine. And he walks away. I took that as, like, listen, you're not... I got no beef with you, but I'm taking, I'm going to go do this thing. These people have tortured me and granted, you know, you're fishing with these people kind of thing. But then at the end, when they do start coming at him, I thought that was like, okay, cool. You've crossed the line now. You've injured me. You've hurt me. I got to come after you. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think that he was just trying to get back into space? I don't know. It's a good question. I doubt it. No, I think at, at this point, point, he's like, I'm here. They fuck with yeah. me. This city's mine. I own this city now. This floating is Star in space. O- this is Stardew Valley. This is Stardew Valley, Nick. Stardew yes. Valley. Kevin. <laughs> Obviously, we have a segment here called Science with Kev. And I don't, I'll just do it. Science, science, science with Kevin. I'm Kevin. Uh, Kevin, if NASA astronauts were up in space mm-hmm. and they looked out the window and saw a sentient being, yeah, they're moving and doing all wiggly wobbly and it looked like Star would they invite that in? Would is that standard protocol? No, for that? but that's okay. why we get that scene where the uh. The guy they took over was all like, look at them. They're not even, like, uh, quarantining it. And it's like, that's what you would do? No, they, they'd they probably put it in a box, duct tape the box, and then send it back to Earth for research. I think research. they'd probably keep it. They probably would probably keep bring it, it back they, to the planet. I just like, you, you they would Reynolds eventually, movie? once they thought it was safe. Yeah, have you seen the Brian Reynolds movie where they're like, we're going to do this experiment in space? No, I haven't. Wrong. Oh, no, man, I haven't. It's fucking Green Lantern? Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. They should never make it on. What a bad experiment. But no, for so, whatever movie you just talked about, I want to see. It's Life, right? Life, that's what it's called, yeah. It's yeah. Life. No, 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 life. no, just Life. That's just Life. life. No. All right. God, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> this so is a bit I, that keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah. I, I, what I thought would happen at the end, you know, was we're, we're uh, a cro- uh, about to pro- approach the moment where they go AWOL and Amanda Waller's going to kill them all. I thought she would like get them to stand down, and I thought it'd be really cool if like we got just in the distance Superman come and like handle the problem, or someone big like a Green Lantern come handle the issue and be like, oh, okay, it got to the point where the problem was big enough that like a real superhero came in and saved the day, and their whole thing is gonna get swept under the rug, and no one will know their, like what they were included. Sure. I don't See, I'm, necessarily I'm that, like, but I think- yeah. I think the joke would have been better if they had killed him, gone through hell to do it, and then Superman showed up. Because you can't not have them kill the bad guy. It would have been super not validating. If you get yeah, to but that I movie, feel like that's what like use the, that damn thing, you know. I, I think that uh, like uh, you know, Gunn could have made that work for what mm. these people are. I would be lying if I wasn't holding out a shred of hope for, for something Superman like that though, yeah. for some kind of superhero even if it's a flash or whatever to show up because now yeah it was on national news right uh, i left out or it's happening right now i forget that when the building cr- crumbles they finally get, they didn't have radio contact in there once the building crumbles they do have radio contact so they can see what's going on we can just pick up here too you know star I, walks off sorry go ahead. one thing one thing sorry no, please. Oh, i no, feel please. like the time. bombs would oh, probably tr- be triggered like if they lost contact, right? Because they like, say they don't lose contact. I mean, it could be a bluff oh, really? by Waller, but Waller is very, very clear of like, listen, your radio comms are going out. They have something going on, okay. but we got can it. we can got still it, track your it. bombs and we will still blow you up. Uh, but anyways, now she radios in. She's like, guess what? Team mission's done. Get the fuck out. Walk on out. And then Bloodsport's like, you heard the lady. And they're like, wait, but there's people. I mean, Rat Catcher's like, there's people. And he's like, eh. And so they walk uh, away or whatever, right? And then Bloodsport does these things. Like, you know what? I got to go back in. So he turns in and starts walking. What are we? Some type of suicide, suicide squad. squad. Uh, he starts walking in. And then one by one, everybody starts to follow and believe in him, right? And like, uh, you know, Harley has some great lines she tells Polka Dot Man, but I can't remember at the moment. And then this is when Waller's like, fucking turn around, stay down, I'll blow you up. Don't try, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh. And she f- does the thing and activates the thing. She's like, last warning. That's when she gets knocked in the head with the putter uh, by the other woman, right? Who's mm-hmm. like, and everybody's like, what the fuck did John's like, what the fuck did she do? She's like, she's talking about killing little kids. Like, we got to do yeah. this. And that clicks no everybody way. into place no except way. for the one this guy. Is, 
Oh, the no most way. unreal moment in the th- in the movie where it's like no one, no one would touch that woman. That woman will like for sure that team would be dead. We would yeah, never see right. those people again. You're getting poisoned. Good luck sure. eating fucking cake the rest of your life. So you're exactly. That's how she no, gets that's the, the cake like she, uh, Waller is the kind of person that will just ha- like wake up in a like slight days, go get her gun and shoot everyone. You yeah, know what she, I mean? And, or she'll, she'll get the job done for sure. That's what I, w- I still wish that would have been the post credits. Of like, cool. Yeah, you know, you, you saved the day here and did that. I'm going to murder you all or dead or whatever. Or at least that one woman who hit her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but this, you know, turns the tide. Everybody's, and they start radioing to the Suicide Squad about where it's going to be and what's going to happen. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, they make their approach. Uh, this is where Bloodsport uh, becomes the leader. Waller said she he would become right. He orders Harley over there. He, uh, you know, uh, oh, he does the uh, King Shark, the monster's nom nom. Which for me was just a little too close to Hulk smash. You know what I mean? When Cap was landing all out in Avengers. But I get it. Uh, and, but then we get the better moment of like <laughs> to Polka Dot Man of like, don't you see who it is? He's like, it's your mom. <laughs> and he he steps out. It's so and it's good. the giant version of his mom, I right? And he fucking blasts the Polka Dots and it erodes her leg to show her bone. And then all it's Starro. And then all the other Starros out there, all the minions lift their leg and scream at their leg. I thought that was so well done. I yeah. thought that was so well done. Right. And, and then, yeah, we come back and it's down on I'm him. a superhero. And then he looks at Bloodsport. I'm a motherfucking super. Just smooshed by Star or whatever. God, that moment uh, hurt. That was a tough moment. I fucking loved him. Totally, and it's dude. It's sad totally. I'm never going to see him again. And this is, yeah, King Shark gets ripped off uh, Starro's arm and thrown across the way into a building. Uh, this is where uh bloodsport realizes he's gonna over his head and uh all the this is where the minions turn on him and they surround him and we get this montage of him using everything on his suit right he's shooting him he's burning him he's using uh uh everything he's got at his disposal to try to stop him but yeah it's him and rat catcher right or rat catchers comes in later it doesn't matter though but eventually yeah he's completely tapped and he's got like nothing right and they surround him and you know through the creatures like star is like uh, you know, this city is mine. And Ratcatch is like, it's not your city. It's not our city. It's theirs. <laughs> and like raises the thing up and you see so all these rats. Dumb. I so dumb it. and so great. Yeah. And like yeah, a- 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 Adrian was like, ah, bloody hell or whatever. And just goes like, you know, into the fetal position as this happens. And she leans over him. And this is where we get the uh, throwback to uh, uh, Taita, right? Uh, where he's like, this the great line of just like, you know, why rats, daddy? And he's like, rats are the lowliest most despised creatures and if they have a purpose so does everyone and i butchered that line but you understand you saw the fucking movie here mm-hmm. this far in this review rats and it's like, fucking fuck. suck but they could also be cool right? they could be the best one. you know what i mean uh, they could totally be the best anyone. so yeah they're fucking cool. running up there are the thousands rat. of rats in the street they're running up starro sebastian's leading the charge and like Starro's starting to freak out you see his, his pupil dilating and freaking out of all this is happening and trying to brush him off and he can't you're like oh man this is fucking gnarly as hell and then Starro. it gets even more fucking gnarly because harley realizes the purpose of the javelin <laughs> it's so good it's so good and so she's up there and she runs and jumps off and punk and i was like oh she's gonna do it and then ride it down like gamora right like no. and instead punctures and goes through into the eye liquid and i was like Didn't expect that so no. fucking gross right but she of course is totally happy sitting there like in zero g water doing it and then all the rats follow suit and they pour in and they start eating the optical nerves and all this shit and you're like and it starts filling with blood and it's just like this is so gross but so cool <laughs> so like this cool. is not how i saw this fight going but it is epic and awesome and it brought you know the whole team together and we're all doing all this shit together it's fucking rad right uh then on the outside yeah you know we see star stumbling around it's eye filling with blood or whatever and then it just falls over on his back and this is back down to uh rat catcher and blood sport uh suarez right uh the general who's now the president or whatever he gets back up and he's star or whatever and he's in what yeah it's just you know what i enjoyed I was happy in the stars looking. I was happy in space looking at the stars or whatever, right? It's, it's such a died. good line. Such a good such line. Such a great line, right? Yeah. Uh, and so he collapses dead. Uh, you know, uh, Star, uh, Harley comes out of Starro's eye, gives the thumbs up to, to Bloodsport. He thumbs up back. And then, you know, it's, it's a celebration for our heroes, right? Uh, it's on the news that this group of meta heroes, meta humans, uh, stopped it all. Uh, Bloodsport's daughter sees that and she's like, That's my dad. It's the first time she's been proud of her father and actually probably acknowledged him as her dad. What are you shaking your head at, Kevin? Just absurd. She'd be, I like for sure if she saw that, it'd be like, He fucking sucks in real life. No, she'd be happy. Yeah, I you know about that. her like, I was, resetting I was your parents. Half, I was half expecting that beat where she's like, Oh my God, 
he's out of prison. He didn't fucking call me or something like that. You know, <laughs> yeah, it was like funny, something. Yeah. I, but like, it was I, endearing. I just don't think but that, I think that uh, yeah, but I don't think that moment should have been endearing for like the tone that they've like set up for this movie. Like I think sure. that tone, like what Nick's saying, would have made more way more sense. I, okay. I buy it just because how they set it up with her and him, where they were obviously antagonistic, but he did this all for her at yeah. the end of the day. So it's he did like, it. Yeah, he did. I think that they they have a complicated he has no idea relationship. You know what I mean? I know, but it doesn't matter. I mean, like yeah. he did it for her you know so she also loves him he loves her well i mean yeah obviously they need it was an endearing moment i think it worked i'm just saying it was a missed opportunity for some level of humor but joke. this movie didn't need any more humor in it i think it was good um my dad oh this is where uh blood sport radios back to waller and he's like that's just a uh, sample of what i have in this hard drive that he had put in his arm earlier uh you know if you, it's all uploaded to a drive if i die my daughter goes to jail or dies or any of the other of us die it's gonna go public so we want to go free and waller's like all right i told you i'd make a leader out of you i agree to your terms or whatever and they send in the task force x plane oh the joke we didn't even, that was earlier right suicide squad we prefer tax uh, task force x suicide squad's kind of uh, demeaning um they all pile on like we talked about early on the film and this is their chance to finally rest uh rat catcher two leans and sleeps on king shark uh harley looks at uh blood sport and is like we did it uh she falls asleep and then yeah uh sebastian the awesome rat crawls on to blood sport and we get that moment of him petting it and being cool and that's suicide squad except for the first post credit scene which is weasel on the beach My man. Up, not dead coughing up all his thing and then chittering and running into the thing <laughs> just like a so weird runoff thing. was Fucking only only Sean Gunn could pull that off. Like, it looks just so the the hilarious body comedy. Oh my! It Lord. looks like how like the the Titans from Attack on Titan move, where there's like yes, uh, yeah, yes. yeah, that's Freaking. yeah, that's right, yeah, it does. Then uh, the final post credit scene or mid credit scene or whatever it's post credits right uh is of course uh the john and the other woman from uh the hq uh coming into a hospital like oh we found this guy in the rubble we thought he'd be dead or whatever blah blah and they come in and it's peacemaker i heard he did this did you really didn't fucking do that at all he's here he's gonna save the fucking world or whatever and that's the end of that setting up your hbo max series peacemaker. the end anyway, so it's can't fucking wait for that series like, if it's anything like this, I'm so in. If it's even a lot less, totally in still, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg, I want you to sing the haiku song. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to sweat it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. Everybody now stop. You. Can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form just like Dan H did. Had a damn blast. Cena and Elba stole show. Wanted Guardians 3. You're gonna get Guardians 3, baby. Yeah, don't, don't, that's a good thing. Best prep, of both worlds. Don't, don't worry. Friend. Andrew Feisner says, friends, not for nom nom. Squishy things <laughs> are so darn cute. New friends, go nom nom. And then miscellaneous, of course, writes the plot in haiku. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The cast star studded. Waller, fucking cold-blooded. All dead. I'm gutted. The real squad arrives, looking cool while taking lives. Oops, killed the wrong side. Telling touching tales, team bonds over their details. At last, lifting veils. Harley escapes, neat. Frees herself with just her feet. Meets team on the street. Starro is released. Teammates are settling their beef. Rats take down the beast. I don't know how miscellaneous does it. But like, damn, damn, always. Now, hit me with a little bit of that ragu bagu, please. Ragu, bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, the podcast within a podcast where we rank the villains of the DCEU. Currently, there are 10 villains on the DCEU list, and they go like this. Best to worst. Number one, Black Mask and Zaz. Number two, Zod. Number three, Rooms Lex, meaning Doomsday and Lex. Number four, Steppy slash Darkseid. Number five, Maxwell Lord and Cheetah. Uh, number six, Thad. Number seven, Sir pat number eight ocean master slash manga number nine steppenwolf another number 10 enchantress and her baby bro where do we want to put starro and corta madera and corta corta maltese corta maltese number one i mean i gotta put waller 
Waller too. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, for that. I mean, yeah. she's always the bad guy in that. In yeah, that but Waller, story. Waller, and Starro, I think, are both debatably bad guys, but they they clearly are the antagonists of this film. Um, and like you can add Thinker in there with Starro, but sure. I, I think that it really worked. And like Greg, you were saying earlier about the exposition and stuff. Like the the stakes for this movie felt correctly set, and even though it, it ended up being a we need to save the world type thing, it didn't feel. Like, it was, like, this giant epic thing. It was, like, yo, there's this thing from space that's fucking shit up in this small area, but that could turn to a bigger problem. It yeah. wasn't so much, like, blue laser in the sky that's going to annihilate everything immediately. And I thought they did a good job playing with that. They came together as a team to take down the villain, and that worked. And Waller seemed like a legit threat. And the way that they used the Suicide Squad and killed the Suicide Squad was way better than the other movie. So, yeah, number one. Sorry, what was, it? What was number one on the list right now? Uh, Black Mask and Zaz from Birds uh, of Prey. Oh, yeah. That was good. That was good, though. That's, but I, I think McGregor Starro killed. was really fucking cool. I would put him underneath that. I'm voting number one as well. I think they're the best villains that we've seen where I liked them all. And I, I the thing about it is I enjoyed them all on screen. I never did, had a moment where I was like, yeah, right, get out of here. Don't do this thing. I liked what they were doing. I liked where their heads were at. And I liked how it all went together. But don't forget I, that part where you and McGregor was like, Ew. <laughs> That was yeah. great too. I'm not. This doesn't take away from how great Ewan McGregor was. I do but feel like Zaz, it's taking away from a, a lot of little great Zaz memories. Uh, you know what? A year removed from that movie. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I, I remember the actor that played Zaz. That's all. That's of course, all. Of he was on uh, Boston Public, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. He was on Chicago Mini Project. Hope, he was on something else. Something else. Mini Project. Yeah. Ah, Newsroom. He was the. Sh- he was Jane Fonda's son. He ran the Newsroom in Newsroom. Cool. Anyways, number one. Done. We have the votes. It's over. Okay. Now it's time to rank. The DCEU currently number one, we got Birds of Prey. Number two, Wonder Woman. Number three, Shazam. Number four, Batman v Superman. Number five, Man of Steel. Number six, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Number seven, Aquaman. Number eight, Wonder Woman 1984. Number nine, Justice League. And number 10, Suicide Squad 2016. What was Andy number three? To number one. Number three was Wonder Woman. That's not, I thought you said number, number two. Sorry, number Wonder two. Woman. Number two is Wonder Woman. What's number three? What is number three? <laughs> uh, Shazam. Thank you. I think this is uh, definitely better than Shazam, and I enjoyed it more than Wonder Woman. The question is, is, is that I enjoyed this more than than Birds of Prey? And you I did. think I did. I yeah. put this at number one. Yeah, it's the best. Number one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Birds of Prey was was surprisingly good, and this was surprisingly or not was unsurprisingly good, but was better than that like this yeah, was fucking i think i think the birds peak of, of prey, what james gunn can do with the suicide squad yeah to me birds of prey was like uh, you see the trailers and you're like i hope this is good and they they delivered but then you hear mm-hmm. james gunn suicide squad and i think that i'm like he had a, uh, maybe a higher mark to hit and he hit that mark in my mm-hmm. opinion and that's why you know I, I think both those films really fun same general vibe and if that's sort of like the dc those side character movie vibes then i'm 100 percent all in no i'm sorry yeah i'm number number one for sure like without a oh. doubt i i enjoyed birds of prey very much uh but i think this movie had me engaged the entire time birds of prey may like gets a little bit like it's it's not as funny but it gets more credit because i wasn't expecting it to be any good you know yeah uh, the reason, just so you guys know why I was so confused when you asked me for number three is because I already put the Suicide Squad at number one, so it messed my numbers up entirely. Because, uh, yeah, anyways, I, I, I was shocked that, I was shocked that Nick even four. had a moment of, of thinking about it. I was like, oh, Tim, shit. Tim, I need okay. you to smell your fidget spinner now. No, okay. I need you to smell oh, the spinner. Stop. Don't do it. No. Oh, okay, okay, idiot. Yeah, you yeah, can't spin it. it. Tim, you can't spin it while you put your face yeah. in it. Matter, with, really. with hope, anything's possible. There it is. It smells good just like this episode of In Review. And guess what? We do them twice a week. Come back next week where we are going to do Don't Breathe 1 and then Don't Breathe 2. Don't breathe. It's going to be a good time. Uh, but let us know in the comments below what you think about the Suicide Squad. And until next time, I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>